following is a presentation of Fox Sports. We are Baltimore. We are Ohio. Marion Local is flying high after back-to-back -back titles. Can the Flyers join Elite Company with their third in a row? The Trimble Tomcats have earned their shot at the title with a dominating defense that has eight shutouts this season. The first ever Division 7 champion will be crowned live on Sports Time Ohio. And welcome in to Maslin's Paul Brown Tiger Stadium for the Division 7 State Championship game. Marion Local, 14-0 on the year. Two-time defending state champions against the Triple Tomcats. They also come in a perfect 14-0 on the year. They're in the state title game for the first time ever. What a matchup we have here tonight. Two tremendous quarterbacks on each side. Taking a look at Adam Berkey from Marion Local. The senior is 6'6", six, six, going for over 1,500 yards, 18 touchdowns, and Frank, he missed the last four <laughs> regular season games of the season due to a hand injury. I mean, these numbers that you see in high school, and Berkey right there, you see 1,500 yards passing, are just off the charts, but he's gonna need time. Connor Stanley, meanwhile, one of the Offensive Players of the Year in Division Seven, second year in a row, he's a first team All-Ohio, Coach told us before the game last year he was more of a runner. This year he's really developed a passing attack. Well, he's found his rhythm uh, this year in the passing attack, and he's spreading it around all over the field. When we look at the keys of the game for the Flyers is play your game, avoid turnovers. You can't give the Tomcats a short field. And for the Tomcats, you've got to play a near-perfect game. Play mistake-free, and their theme is you got to believe. Keys of the game brought to you by Wayside Furniture. Better furniture, priced lower. All right, our weather conditions, game time temperature at 20. It's going to get dipped down into the teens before we're all said and done here tonight. The good news is not much of a wind at all to speak of, so that will definitely play a factor because it should enable both teams to at least throw the ball. It, it should, and, but we saw earlier in the 11 o'clock game where the quarterbacks, I thought, were overthrowing the ball a, 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 a lot. Mm -hmm. And that's because and they weren't getting that tight spiral. And I, I think that's because of the elements. The cold is making the grip on the football a little bit tougher. Yeah, moisture is tough to come by when it's this cold. No <laughs> doubt about it. Tonight's kickoff brought to you by Time Warner Cable. Enjoy sports better. Set to kick it off for the Trimble Tomcats is number 60, John Stevens. He's a senior offensive Very lineman. Football. A very good one at that. They also play defensive tackle where he's a first team all Ohioan. And if that's not enough work, he'll handle the kickoff duties as well. Back deep to return for Marion Local is J.C. Guttemuller. And he's a game breaker in his own right. But we are ready to go here in Maslin. Stevens has it teed up. And the seventh and final state championship game this weekend is underway. Short kick, taken at the 21-yard line. Spinning away, still on his feet. Hunter Wilker, he takes it out to about the 35-yard line, and that's where the Marion local Flyers will go to work. Tonight's starting quarterbacks are brought to you by Hyundai. Adam Berkey, second team All-Ohio, and 6'6", 215, scheduled to go to the University of Pittsburgh to play college football next year. Over 1,500 yards, 65% completion percentage, 18 TDs, five interceptions. And he can also run it. And Frank, he'll run it with authority, won't he? Yeah, he's a big kid. He'll lower your shoulder. He'll lower his shoulder against you. High formation, Berkey gonna throw it on the run. Swings it out wide, it's complete to Troy Holman, his leading receiver. And Holman's got eight yards on that first down catch. That's his team leading 57th catch of the year, over 800 yards receiving now on the season. Offensively for the Flyers, Burke is the center, not related to the quarterback. Chris Lochtefeld is one guard, Poppelman at the other. Heckman and Brunswick are the tackles. J.C. got a bowler, over five yards of carry in the backfield. Holman, the leading receiver, you have already met him, Hunter Wilker at another wide out. And hand it off. And on the 
carry. It's J.C. Gettemuller. He will not get the first down. Picked up a yard. He'll be a yard shy. It'll be third down and one. And they tack you with the first down pass, and here they come back with the counter tray. But excellent job by Terry Simmerly coming from the backside linebacker and making that play. And I'm talking about, you talk about this Trimble Tomcat defense. They're very, very fast, and that's what they're going to need. Boy, they are packed in. You talk about loading the box. Two tight end set. The quarterback, Berkey, keeps it, and he'll pick up the first down. Picked up three yards, just lowering his shoulder and moving the pile straight ahead. Defensively for the Trimble Tomcats, brought to you by Time Warner Cable. Up front, Altier and Couch are the ends. The, the tackle, Stevens and Coons, along with Colin Lunsford. The linebackers, Jacob Coons and Connor Stanley in the secondary. Justice Jenkins and Austin Downs are the corners. Jacob Kish and Terry Simmerly are the safeties. Simmerly, though, as a strong safety, comes down into the box as a linebacker. They'll throw it, and a first down catch. Troy Holman brought it in, and they're going to mark him right at the sticks. I thought he had forward progress, and now they will move it out. A gain of 11 and a first down. Berkey looks good with his rhythm. Rhythm, Beautifully thrown ball there to Holman. Nice job. He's settling down early, and that's what you want to see if you're Coach Goodwin. Little, he got, got man coverage back there. Had the matchup he wanted versus Austin Downs. Justice Jenkins made the tackle, forcing him out of bounds. Berkey going to throw it again, a little sidearm. Swings it in there once again to Holman, and he's got 11 more for another. Flyer first down. I've always been impressed with quarterbacks who can change their throwing angle <laughs> and still be accurate it, with it. And look at the arm strength here. Bam, there really no, there, there's really no step into that football. That's all arm right there, and he's just slinging it. So Berkey has Marion Local on the move. They've marched it down to the 31-yard line of Trimble. He looks good the field once again. Throwing on time, throwing on rhythm, throwing from the spot. He looks good starting his football game. They fake it to Wilker. They give it to Gettemore. He goes straight ahead down to the 25-yard line. A gain of six yards on that carry. J.C. Guttemuller and the quarterback, Adam Berkey, were banged up during the regular season. The two of them were both injured in the game uh, prior to Coldwater. And uh, actually, they both were injured in the game against St. John's, a game they won 28 to 14. They missed the final four regular season games of the season, but they got back in time for the playoffs. Marion Local has not skipped a beat. They are 14 and 0 on the year. The keeper and the quarterback Berkey takes it down to the 20 yard line, still on his feet, pulls the man forward down close to the 19, another first down for the Flyers. Just a quarterback lead right there. He gets it back in front of him. They go two tights, two wides, one back. One back serves as the blocking back for Berkey. And then you have Jake Kish comes up from his secondary, from his safety position. They call Jake Kish number five, the destroyer. Proud son of Amy Kish. Not only good, Berkey looking to throw. Goes toward the end zone. He was looking for Bruins, the tight end, but a little too tall Bench for him. And that's, that's hard to do because Bruins is 6 7. The junior went to the post route, but it, it was well covered by the Trimble secondary. Well covered by Justin Jenkins back there, number 21. In fact, he jumps that ball. If that ball is thrown you know, on time and, and where it's supposed to be, all right, Justin Jenkins, I got to believe, comes away with the pick. Second down and 10. Ball resting just inside the 20 yard line. High formation now this time. Play action fake. Look out. They go to the screen. Gunnamuller's got a convoy in front of him. He won't be touched into the end zone. He goes. And the Flyers strike first. A 20 yard screen pass for the touchdown. Boy, that was the perfect call against that defense. They brought pressure and they caught him. Flat they caught him in man coverage. You're right. That was a beautiful call. They sell the play action to the offensive right, and then they go back with the screen pass left. Get nice blocking downfield, and really he, will, he he goes into the end zone uncontested. Peyton Kramer comes on now to try the extra point. Extra point try. Nate Nagel will hold. Good snap, good set. Kick is up, and he just did. Squeeze it through the upright. 
Seven to nothing. The Flyers strike first on an impressive opening drive. Capped by the toss from Berkey to Guttemuller. We'll be back. The Ohio High School Athletic Association State Championships are brought to you by Time Warner Cable. Enjoy the most sports on the most devices, no matter where you are, only with Time Warner Cable. By Wayside Furniture, better furniture, price lower. And by Panini's with 18 Northeast Ohio locations. So Marion Local out to the early 7 to nothing lead, 8.15 to go here in the first quarter. Tom Goodwin, or Tim Goodwin, excuse me, Tim Goodwin, 164 wins and just 40 defeats as the head coach at Marion Local. Six times the Flyers have hoisted the state championship trophy, including each of the last two seasons. You saw Terry Simmerly, he's back deep to return for Trimble. Peyton Kramer will kick it off. Got a couple of conventional Lou Groza style kickers here tonight. <laughs> Gotta love it. And a good boot. Similarly, we'll field it at his six yard line. And they'll reverse it. And here comes Cutter Stanley. A lot of room to run. He'll try to cut it back at the 40, still on his feet. And goes down at the 45. A little razzle dazzle on the <laughs> kickoff for the Trimble Tomcats. And that's got their fan base up on their feet. How about that? Little razzle dazzle out, out of Phil Ferris actually running an offensive play. Out of the kickoff return, the beautiful job of faking with the football. That's Austin Downs, all state, and handing it off to the other side there, getting the ball to his guy, his go to guy, Connor Stanley. Stanley under center, turns, hands it off. And this is Justice Jenkins. And he lugs it forward for about two, maybe three yards on that carry. Starting quarterback for the Trimble Tomcats, Connor Stanley, brought to you by Hyundai. He's thrown for over 2,200 yards. He's rushed for almost 900 more, so better than 3,000 yards of total offense for Connor Stanley. First team All-Ohio and Offensive Player of the Year in Division Seven. He'll go with an I formation set. Jacob Coons the fullback. He's gonna chuck it deep downfield. Oh, what a catch made by Austin Downs. He's already the school's all-time leading receiver, and he's only a junior. That's his 74th catch of the year. Better than 1,300 yards receiving, and a first-team All-Ohioan. Well, we talked about Austin Downs' speed, and here you see it. Connor Stanley working off the play action. Downs gets great a route right there inside the defender, and then he peels away from him. Nice, nice throw, better catch. Stanley going to turn and hand it off. And this is Jenkins taking it down to the 25-yard line. He picks up three yards. Jenkins comes into the game, the sophomore averaging eight yards a carry, a dozen touchdowns. There is Connor Stanley. Last year he was a first-team All-Ohio, and so back-to-back -back years. 5'9", 170 pounds, and not only is, the, is he the starting quarterback, but he's also one of their starting inside linebackers. So you know he's got that tough mentality. And wishbone formation and straight ahead plows Jacob Coombs. Marion Local saying the ball came out. Referees say no, he was down. Here's the starters up front Jonathan Roback, flanked by Stevens and Coombs. Spears and Couch. Now the uh, backs, as we've already met, Coombs, Jenkins down. Jimmy Ward at one split end, and then Wyatt Bragg. Is your tight end. And out of this offense, they're going to formation you to death. You see the eye, you'll see the spread. Here you see the wishbone. Jenkins again. He's got running room and he takes it down to the 15. It's a first down for the Trimble Tomcats. Well, it's just power right there out of the bone. And this nice job of picking his way, staying patient, keeping your shoulders square, and picking up every inch you can. Phil Ferris told us before the game that they're a multiple set offensive team. We're already seeing yeah. it on this opening drive. Stay with the bone. And Jenkins is stacked up after a short game. Defensively for Marion Local, the nose tackle is Jason Brunswick. 
The defensive ends, Chris Lochtefeld, Peyton Kramer. The linebackers, Blake Benton, Joe Schwederman, Jacob Kunkler, and Brandon Pranger. The corners are Nate Nagel and Dustin Rethman. The safeties are Adam Berkey and J.C. Guttemuller. Second down and nine. This is Jacob Coons, the fullback. He takes it down, still churning, trying to get down to the 10-yard line, just shy of the 10. It will bring up third down for Trimble. In their first ever state title game, this is an offense that during the season, in their 14 games leading into the state title event, averaged 378 yards of offense per game, 40 points per contest. So they're used to marching it up and down the field and getting it into the end zone, but a big third down play here. They need the five yard line. Stanley swings it out. He's got his man. And it's complete for a first down to Austin Downs. So Downs with a couple of big catches on this opening drive for the Trimble Tomcats, and they've got it first and goal at the five yard line. You see Stanley getting the ball out on time. That's the key. And Downs, and he's well aware where that first down marker is. He low lowers his shoulder and he picks it up. Only picks it up by a couple of feet. They'll spot the ball just outside the four yard line. First and goal. For the Tomcats, Jimmy Ward splits to the bottom of your screen. Connor Stanley going to keep it. Look out, he's in trouble in the backfield, and he'll go down for a loss. Nothing there. And a swarm of white shirts were all over him, including Blake Benton, number 19. They want to, want to run quarterback sweep to the right. It's not there, and he realizes it. So he wants to reverse his field, but then that comes the white shirts from the backside. Wisely, he gets that ball upfield, takes as li little of a loss as possible. Benton was the first man there, and then Jacob Kunkler, a first-team All-Ohio and linebacker for the Flyers, was quickly in to help on the stop. Now second down and goal from the five. Stanley to throw, end zone too high. He was looking for downs once again. And it will bring up third down and goal to go. Nice pressure by Peyton Kramer, number 52. Getting to Stanley, having him feel the heat. That's what you want to see. You want to see your defensive line get into the quarterback, maybe not sacking the quarterback, but at least let him know you're there, get him down on the ground. It's always a point of emphasis for defensive coordinators, and I'm sure it was for Dan Koenig to get, tell his guys, hey, listen, you're not going to get him every time, but let him know that you're coming. A very good Marion local defense that registered four shutouts during the season. On third and goal, Stanley under serious pressure. Nowhere to go. Flips oh. it forward, it's intercepted. Oh, it was Joe Schwederman who picked it out of the air. Stanley was just trying to get rid of it to save field position and inadvertently flipped it to Schwederman who comes up with the interception. He was just trying to throw it yeah, away to yeah. avoid a big loss. Try, you know, and that play gets blown up because he's really got to bounce that outside attack to the line of scrimmage. And he feels that he feels the sack coming, so he wants to get rid of the football. Ill-advised toss right in the hands of Schwederman. We'll take a timeout here in Maslin with 327 left to go in the first quarter. Marion Local with a 7 to nothing lead. Seven nothing, Marion Local with the lead. 3:27 to go here in the first quarter. Well, let's introduce the third member of our team tonight, Lindsay Raleigh. Hi guys, a lot of excitement down here on the field, and that all starts during pregame. I don't know if you guys saw, but Trimble before the game carried out a huge rope, and the story behind that is that at the beginning of this season, the National Guard came and spent some time with the Trimble football team, and then from there they adopted the military saying, "Hold the rope," which stems from the idea, "Who would you want holding the rope when you're hanging off a cliff?" So now, before each game, they carry out this ginormous rope to symbolize their unity. Coach Ferris said he's very supportive of the tradition, but he did admit that if the team would have had a few more losses at the beginning of the season, he's pretty sure the rope would have ended up in the river, but it's been working <laughs> so far. So we'll see if it helps him out here tonight. Well, Matt? Got to continue to hold that rope. Thanks a lot, Lindsay. And on the first down carry, rushing it out there for a gain of about five, maybe six yards, was J.C. Guttemuller. A great symbol of trust right there with the rope. See the toss on that play. Gets a nice block on the perimeter from number 20, Austin Albers. 
On that comes down and cracks inside. He cracks Stanley, who plays middle backer for the Tomcats. Second down and five from the 15. Well, actually, the ball resting at the 14 yard line. So called second and six. Berkey going deep. And he underthrows his man, nearly intercepted. Good coverage by Justice Jenkins. He nearly had his fifth interception of the year. Wow. That Justin Jenkins can fly. Wilker, Wilker's got a beat on the post right here off the play action. He bites a little bit, but you see the catch up speed right there by Jenkins. He's in position to make that catch, and he's upset he didn't. Nice catch up. He was beat by two or three, four steps. Third down and five. He can flat out fly. Spread formation this time for the Flyers, and they're going to run. And the quarterback, Berkey, keeps it. He's got the first down out just over the 20 yard line. Now that's what the destroyer wants to do. Jake Kish, number five, coming up. That quarterback's going to run it. Berkey's going to run it. You better let him know it. Here he comes. Again, that's just quarterback, just I had quarterback run right there off the left side. You see number five coming up, Jake Kish getting him down. That's going to take its toll on those quarterback runs. He's going to feel that. Then all of a sudden when he starts feeling it, he doesn't grip the ball as tightly. Then you get turnovers. First and 10. And we'll hand it to the first back through. It's like Aaron Neatfeld with his first carry of the night. Takes it up for a gain of four yards. You know, interestingly enough, though, Coach Tim Goodwin told you before the game that Adam, Adam Berkey, when he runs the ball, he runs with a little mean streak. Right. What do he say? He's going to thump your. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really want to say it, but he's going to thump your butt. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. He's a tough kid. He wants to play defense. They don't let him. They don't. They won't let him. The six-six senior signal caller looks over the Trimble defense. And second down and about six. Quick throw and it's complete. Boy, he has been right on the money with a lot of his passes already here tonight. That's Troy Holman again. Well, you see what Pitt likes him and Berkey right here. Just a nice setup, strong arm. Bam, he just whips it in there. Beautiful timing on that slant route to Homan. Good gang tackling in that secondary by Trimble. Jacob Kish coming up to finish him off. But not before. It's a first down out to the 35 yard line. Here they are on the move again. Another first down since the turnover. That's two. Berkey going to go deep. And it's a little too long. It was intended for Austin Albers, but just beyond his reach. And what I'm seeing here so far, Frank, and, and I don't know if it's a case where they're going to have to maybe think about starting to bring some linebackers, but they're getting no pressure whatsoever on Berkey. Yeah, that's a, that's a dangerous thing. You better get some pressure on him. You better make him feel it. Hurry those throws, disrupt the rhythm, disrupt the timing in the passing game because when he can just take a shot downfield and all those, you know, those deep routes, he's going to connect sooner or later. Second down and 10. A little slip screen. It was nearly intercepted because he missed his target and coming underneath Austin Downs. If that ball was maybe another yard in his direction, he's going the other way with it. That's the danger with the yeah. slip screen. It only takes one guy <laughs> to read it, and it can really blow You're up trying your face. to get the ball to Wilker here, number 21. It gets a little lazy with his delivery right there. Just not great mechanics and just slings that ball out there. Set your feet a little bit. Get that ball to the receiver. A third down and 10 now for Marion Local. Berkey. Finally gets some pressure on him, and he's going to be set back inside his own 30-yard line. John Stevens eventually, or I think it was Mikey Couch who actually was the last man there to bring him down. But they were all in on the play. John Stevens got some pressure. Initially, it was Tanner Coons. I think just about everybody on yeah. that defensive line got a shot <laughs> well, on him at one time it's, or another. It's, it's speaking of everybody, <laughs> the, the, the uh, Flyers sent five out in the pattern and the secondary does a, a fantastic job of covering all five of those receivers and then allowing the correct pressure to get the first Redman with a pretty good punt oh it goes out of bounds and let's see where they mark it out of bounds 
is going to work out very well for Trimble. As that ball went out of bounds at the 49-yard line of Marion Local. So the Tomcats will have very good field position for their second offensive yeah. possession of the night. Yep, for the second time in a row. You saw the, the, the first first possession had very good field position off the kickoff return, a little trickery that we saw. And now here they start, they start again in Marion Local's own half of the field. Connor Stanley. What kind of a, a yeah. pistol formation, huh? We'll run the sweep near side, gonna throw it. And he hit Downs right in the hands with it, but Downs might have been looking upfield before he secured the catch. And, and that's exactly that's exactly what he was doing. He was looking downfield before you know he caught the football. And we talked about them playing mistake-free uh, football tonight to get them to have a chance to win this game. They've got to execute. Same thing. Mistake-free, execute right there. They're not executing by catching the football. You see the time remaining here in the first quarter. Pressure, Stanley tries to get away, cuts up field. Takes it down to the 40-yard line. Very close to a first down. He'll be about a yard, a yard shy as time runs out here in the first quarter in Maslin. The Trimble Tomcats are on the move. The Marion local Flyers have jumped out to the 7-0 lead in this, the Division 7 state championship game, the final of our championship weekend coverage. Back with the second quarter after this. Before we start the second quarter, let's go downstairs to Lindsay Rally. Thanks, guys. I'm down here with Jeff Jenkins, Chief Financial Officer of the OHSAA. Now, Jeff, playoff, football playoff revenues are so important to the OHSAA. Tell me why these revenues are so important. Absolutely. What a lot of people don't realize is, is that we're not a taxpayer-funded organization. We get all of our money, about 75% of our money comes from tournaments just like this. It's a fantastic opportunity to have people in our communities come out. We distribute about $2.6 million a year back to member schools. And so we think that's a great value to be part of the membership schools. We do catastrophic insurance. We do turn, no tournament entry fees. Great things like that for our communities. School treasurers have been a wonderful partner as part of that. We think that that's a great way to make sure the revenues are accountable so that we can continue to do these kind of things across the state for a long time. Absolutely, well thank you so much, Absolutely. Jeff. Guys? All right, thanks a lot, Lindsay. Second quarter, about to get underway. And the Trimble Tomcats faced with an important third down and one from the Marion Local 40-yard line. One back in the backfield, and it's Jacob Coons who gets the carry, and he muscles his way forward for the first down, taking it to the 38-yard line of the Flyers. Let's go back and take a look at the final play of the first quarter. Connor Stanley under duress, but he tucks it and takes off. He does here a little half roll, trying to get the ball out to the perimeter. Goes, shows good strength there, breaking a tackle, and look at him put his head down, fighting for that extra yardage. That's the kind of effort you see in high school football every Friday night, and especially here throughout the playoffs. On a first down play now, and off. And a good second effort by Justice Jenkins takes it down to the 34-yard line. Looked like he was stopped initially, Frank, but you keep the legs moving, you good keep, things can happen. That's exactly right. I mean, what is this, off tackle right here? That's as simple as it, it, simple as it gets right there. But what you're looking for as a head coach, you're watching the effort up front, the push. He gets a nice push. The effort by the back right there, the second effort you see, the yardage after the contact, and it's there, and it's got to make Coach Ferris happy. Second down and five. High formation. Jenkins trying to get outside. He won't do it. Good defensive coverage that time. It was Blake Benton from his outside linebacking position. And he just closed the gap on him. And conversely, what you want to see now that the Tomcats are driving, you want to see how your Flyers respond. And right there, Blake Benton creating a hard edge and making that tackle for a loss. There's the support there by Cutler as well. Good team defense. Cutler, a first team All Ohioan. And into this game with 129 tackles on the year. Third down and 10 for Trimble. And Phil Ferris will take a timeout. He figures, you know, this is kind of a big play early in the game, second quarter. They had a very good opening drive. It, it stalled deep in Marion local territory. And on a 
Third down play, an inadvertent flip pass by Connor Stanley was intercepted. We're looking at the tape on that play. He was trying to make a play to Austin Downs, but the flip just went awry mm -hmm. on him and ended up in the hands of Joey Schwederman. Now, it's important they stay close. Well, I'll let you talk about the Trimble Tomcats race. Well, Frank, Trimble is you know, located in Athens County. I'm sure a lot of folks are wondering, well, who are these Trimble Tomcats? They've never been in a state championship <laughs> game before. The last team from Athens County to win a state title was 1981. So it's a great story. This is a, a small community. It's a mining town that's been on hard times for a long time. Uh, this football team and the season that they've had has united the entire community. It's had these people walking on air. They've, they're able to puff out their chest, walk around town with pride. You see the Mohawk there. The Mohawk Mafia has become a big symbol of unity for this club. It started with when a couple of grade school kids got some Mohawks. They had older brothers who were on the football team. They showed up with Mohawks. It just spread like wildfire. Now everybody in the community is walking around. It's anymore. an outstanding story. Stanley can't get away. He tried to. Tuck it and run, but right there to greet him. It was number 42, Joe Schwederman, and also Peyton Kramer, a second team All Ohio, and number 52. He might have been the first one there, and he was. Yeah, take a look at Schwederman and, and Kramer showing up at the same time. That's great pressure. We talked to Coach Goodwin about, hey, do you like to bring pressure? And right there is a perfect example of it. You, you talked about you know the community and the rivalry that last team out of their conference to make it was Nelsonville York and it's not just in their community when they were coming up and traveling to this game on the border they got a nice sign from their biggest rival Mark Nelsonville York. Oh boy big balls loose this could be a huge play if the Tomcats can come up with it. No. A terrific job to maintain possession by Marion Local. That could have been nearly disastrous for the Flyers. Disastrous for, for the Flyers, but a big break, something that the Tomcats would have welcomed. But I was finishing my point that the rival put a sign on the border and said, good luck, yeah. Tomcats. And I thought that's just awesome. That's a great sign of the respect that they have earned with a 14-0 season coming in here tonight. They trail 7-0. Marion Local goes on the attack when we come back. Marion Local with the lead. They've got the ball, 9.35 to go here in the first half. Right now on FoxSportsOhio.com. The Cavs bounce back from last night's tough loss in Atlanta. Will the Buckeyes complete their second perfect season and pull off a BCS title game berth? And make sure to check out Kevin Coheen's game recaps and analysis from all the state title games. It's all on FoxSportsOhio.com. Put that remote down and stay here. That's right. Yeah, you're going to see better effort in this football game. I guarantee you. 9.35 left in the half. Adam Burke and the Flyers offense back on the field. Burke going to keep it himself, and he's got all kind of running room. He's out to the 45-yard line as he rumbles for 16 yards on that carry. So, Berkey, he's great at finding space. Watch the counter trade. Great block by Lochtefeld, number 68 there. And then Berkey gets up inside of that, and then he gets into the second level in a hurry. He's getting the blocking up front. He's getting down, down, guard pull, guard and tackle pull, and he's finding that seam behind him. First and 10. From their own 45, Berkey keeping himself again. He takes it into triple territory to about the 48-yard line of the Tomcats. Adam Berkey, according to his head coach, Tim Goodwin, is, quote, a tremendous person. He's a stud on and off the field. He says he's what you want your son to be and your daughter to date. He is absolutely clutch, end quote. That's from his head coach, Tim Goodwin. And obviously, the big reason why the University of Pittsburgh wants him. Talking about somebody, somebody's daughter doesn't get any better than that, huh? Not a stronger compliment out there. First down carry by Aaron Neatfeld, the sophomore running back, who came into this game leading the team in rushing with 163 carries and over 900 yards and 15 touchdowns. He gives him a little change of pace and a quick burst. 
He's only 5'9 and 175 pounds, but he gets going north and south in a hurry. This time, Neatfeld and Guttemuller flank Berkey in the backfield. Quick pass. It's complete to Holman. Okay, Holman is inside, inside the 40 yard line. Still on his feet, taking it down to about the 36 yard line. It'll be a couple shy of another first down. The Flyers of Marion Local down in Mercer County. It's a great program. No other way to put it. It's a public school. Mid American, that in the Midwestern Athletic Conference, they produce something. They've already produced one state champion today, Coldwater. Usually there's one or two schools in the state finals every single year. Makes the handoff. Berkey going to go deep. He's going for Holman, and he overshoots him inside the five yard line. The town is actually Maria Stein, Ohio. The school is named Marion Local because they draw from a couple of different communities, but they're all very small communities. It's a former collection of one-room schoolhouses <laughs> that was eventually consolidated into one high school. But uh, you talk about some tough kids year in and year out. I'm glad you explained that because I had some questions. Mary, Mary, Maria Stein and Marion Local. I mean, you know, what's the makeup there? And of course, you mentioned the Midwest Athletic Conference. There's not a better conference in the state of Ohio. They no, defeat uh -uh. Coldwater, just won the Division Five state championship. Berkey gonna try to run it himself. Good convergence by the red shirts, but look at Berkey. He still just lowers the shoulder and picks up four close to five yards. He had nowhere to go. Still gets the first down. Uh, he's not giving up on this play right there. The quarterback design run right there. The quarterback roll, and then he just decides, bam, to cut it up inside his blockers. That's just toughness. You talk, it's a thumping that he's putting on the defenders. At the 32 yard line, a first and 10 for the Flyers. They lead it 7 to nothing. Berkey, another quick pass. This one is Wilkin. Hunter Wilkin, that's a good side, but he is tackled down just outside the 25 yard line, and it was Connor Stanley from his linebacking position who got over there, got an ankle, and wouldn't let go. Well, you're seeing a balanced attack by the Flyers. They're doing a a nice job of mixing the pass and, and the run together, moving this ball down the field. But on the other side, the Tomcats, hey, they're they're keeping, they're staying out of the big play, and that's important. They're making the Flyers earn everything they get. Now they spread the field on offense. Pitches it to Gunnable inside the 20. Hurdles his way down to the 16-yard line. He was upended by Jacob Kish, but not before he picks up another flyer first down. And well, I'll tell you what, Berkey got rid of the ball just in time. He certainly did. And then, you know, Jacob Altier makes him execute the option, and he, he options it very well to gut him, gut him more. A first down at the 16 yard line. Clock moving. Go under six minutes before the snap here. Guttemuller again inside the 15. Oh, 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 oh. It's picked up by Trimble and they've got it back at the 14 yard line. I'll tell you what, if Justice Jenkins stays on his feet, he's still running. But Trimble will take it. Had he not stumbled, he would have gone all the way for a touchdown. But. Just the same, they keep Maria Stein out of the end zone and they get the football back. Watch number 20. Just couldn't quite stay on his feet. Watch Jake Kish come up here right there. Bam! That's the initial contact. And then from behind, that's 56 Altier forcing the fumble. And then I believe you said that was Jenkins, right? Yeah. On the pickup. Little reverse play. Going to try to throw it, and it is snuffed out and buried back inside the five-yard line. My goodness. What a great job defensively. Jimmy Ward was going to try to throw it off the reverse, but the white shirts were there all over it. Yeah, normally you see this on a quick change of possessions out near midfield or you when you crossed midfield. Here they go. Coach Ferris goes to it right here deep in his own territory, and that's the danger running the reverse pass there, and they sniff it out. You see Jacob Coons right there. Yeah, I guess it was Jimmy, or excuse me, Wyatt Bragg, who was coming back around to try and throw it, but no chance to get it off. Well, yeah, that was Schwederman, 42, coming up with the big play. 
on a toss. Sweet. Not much there. They, were, they did well just to get back to the line of scrimmage with Justice Jenkins there. And it will be third down and 19 with the clock moving inside five minutes in the first half. Now they're up against it. Yeah, you talked about the time. They want to hold on to this football. Certainly you don't want to turn it over here. All right. Just hold on to it. Now, you know, maybe get a little bit back, but you want to punt this ball away and then play some D. Is the screen pass too obvious here? Well, third down's not a big screen or draw play. I think it is because you could draw man coverage. You know, you know, I just don't know. I don't see it that the screen pass on a screen play on third down. Well, Trimble Tomcats are going to take a timeout. Phil Ferris wants to think it over because this is a big play. Not necessarily do they need a first down to keep it going, but they need a little breathing space. They need to get it out from the shadow of their own goalposts at this point because they've done a terrific job of hanging in there to this point down seven to nothing but if they don't get any yards here and they get a short punt short field the Flyers right. can make it a two yeah. score game yeah. going into halftime yeah. in a hurry. absolutely and you know you ask me what to do here no, it, what, what, you know, screen play, screen, uh, play could work you, you never know but I, I kind of like you know run the receivers deep and then hit a, like a, a medium crosser right there picking up maybe five yards short of the the, the first down because they're going to be defending the sticks if they're smart and then you hope for yardage after the catch yeah they need the 25 yard line roughly for a first down it's got to be beyond the 24 and they're sitting at their own five yard line so as you pointed out anything that picks up 10 or even 15 yards right. would be huge right here for Trimble obviously they'd love to pick it all up and get the first down Connor Stanley Takes the snap, bump fake. He's gonna go deep down the sideline, and it's incomplete. Put it up there deep. He was going for Wyatt Bragg. But good coverage on the play defensively. Nate Nagel was right there with him stride yep. for stride. And they're going for the whole enchilada here to Bragg, and they you know, well covered there by Nagel. He's not gonna give up the deep ball on that. Now they're kicking, now they're putting from their own end zone. Yeah, Tristan Conway deep in his own end zone. Hunter Wilker is back to return. Along with. Side down the 25 yard line. Justin Rethman will give the Flyers tremendous field position. All right, so with 4.09 left to go here in the first half, the Flyers have the ball back, and Adam Berkey goes back on the attack when we return. Stay tuned for the Wayside Furniture Halftime Report. Dave Chodowski, Bill Powers, Ryan Cavanaugh in the studio with the highlights and analysis, and since this is the final game of our weekend coverage. I know Ryan Cavanaugh will be unveiling his all Cavanaugh team, and I just hope he has the guy driving the snowplow yesterday from uh, <laughs> Fawcett Stadium. I've never seen a guy drive in reverse faster than that guy did yesterday. He was driving faster in reverse than I drive going forward. It was unbelievable. Very impressive. Right now, Marion Local, first and 10 from the 25 yard line of Trimble. Little counter reverse and look out, here comes Hunter Wilker inside the 20. Still has feet at the 15 yard line and finally knocked down at about the 14. Little wrinkle the Tomcat defense hasn't seen. The counter to Wilker run very well. Nice block there by number 68. That's Lochtefeld. He gets it inside there. Wilker, nice move downfield, a little shake, staying on his feet, staying upright. Another first down at the 15 yard line. Turkey going to keep it. 10, 5, and out of bounds. Where did he step out? And a penalty flag. This one's coming back, I do believe. Either got a hold or an illegal block. I think a hold. And that is the initial call. Costly penalty. He's going to back him up, put him around the 20, 25 yard line versus the two yard yeah. line. They would have had first and goal at either the one or the two yard line, depending on where he stepped out. Instead, it's all the way back to the 22 yard line. So now 
with 3.38 left in the half. Coach Goodwin knows it. You see it there, pacing the sidelines. Now can Trimble take advantage of what appears to be a pretty good break for them. Berkey, they run the screen. Got him over. Shakes a couple of tackles, but he gets hammered down at the 20-yard line. Connor Stanley in on the stop along with Jacob Coons, first-team All-Ohio linebacker. But watch this Tom Cap, the Mohawk Mafia defense collapse. They're similarly right there. He shows up, and then you see the rest of the guys there. Stanley showing up as well. Kish there. I mean, they, those guys just, they, they swarm to the football. Jacob Coons registered over 200 tackles. In 14 games of triple play coming into this one. He's usually around the football. This, this is the defense that pitched eight shutouts this year. Berkey keeps it, takes it down to about the 15. So he's back to the original line of scrimmage, and it will be third down and 10. Under three minutes to go here in the half. And we got plenty of times now an issue with 240 and counting. Almost looks like they're going to take a timeout here. They're going to let the clock run down, and they will take a timeout with 229 left to go here in the first half. They've got a third down and 10 at the 15 yard line. And we'll see what they decide to do. If it's go for the end zone, try to get something inside the five to pick up a first down. Hey, don't forget to follow at Sports Time Ohio and the OH Champs hashtag on Twitter. Tell us your top plays, which players have stood out, deserve to make the All Cavanaugh team. Make sure you tweet to Ryan. Put the snowplow guy on the All Cavanaugh team, and that'll be announced after our game tonight. Snowplow guy could be. Right. Lining up at fullback. <laughs> well, we yep. had the dozer, right? We had the dozer from Akron St. Vincent St. Mary. That's right. That's right. Yep. Yeah. Well, they've just did a, they've done a fabulous job. I've not been over to Canton, but, you know, over here at Maslin, they, you know, they had three inches uh, at, by halftime on this football field, and they went to work. You talk about the guys mm -hmm. in the equipment over there. They, they, you know, they had the small, uh, you know, blowers or, you know, little, uh, John Deere's and then they brought out the pickup truck <laughs> that went lengthwise on this football field at halftime. There's Jacob Coons, a linebacker, going back out for Trimble. They need a stop. It's third down, so it's essentially four down territory, I would imagine, right here for the Flyers. We'll see what they come up with on this third down and 10. Berkey, one of the end zone, penalty flag down, incomplete. Good defensive play, was knocked away by Austin Downs. I think they might have had two men moving at the That's same time exactly before the right, snap. Matt. That's exactly right. That's yep. a legal motion. So that's going to back them up five more, or they could decline the penalty and make it fourth down. And that's what they'll do. So it will be fourth and 10 from the 15-yard line, and it looks like they're going to attempt a field goal here. Can't disagree with that. Come away with some points. Peyton Kramer will line it up. Go up two scores. Looks like they'll spot it, Frank, at the 22, so call it a 32-yard field goal. And last time, Simmerly was very close to blocking this. Snap, good set, kick is up. No good. So another good hold for the Trimble Tomcats. They, wow. They've been they're like a, a boxer in a heavyweight fight. They keep bobbing and weaving, and they're hanging in there. They're not on the board yet. They're going toe-to-toe, -to -toe. and like you said, they're still standing. Coming into this game, the underdog. Defense bent right there, but did not break, did not give up any points. And if you can build on anything at halftime going in, Coach Ferris will certainly recognize that in a defensive effort. All right, with 2.20 left to go here in the first half, the Tomcats take over. Connor Stanley, high formation in the backfield. Marion showing blitz. Jenkins picked up about five or six yards before he was driven back and in on the stop. That's the quarterback, Adam Berkey. Coach said they don't let him play linebacker, yeah. but they do let him play defense, just not <laughs> linebacker. He lost his shoe on that play right there. He's trying to get the knot out of it, put it back on. I don't know if he's going to be able to do it in time. Although Trimble's not hurrying to the line. They're you don't need a shoe. Just put it on the ground. You can play barefoot. 
He's going to play with it untied. Might as well take it off. He's still not on. He there. does. He kicks it off. He'll play with one two. Connor Stanley runs it up off to the 33 yard line. It'll be a first down for the Tomcats. Well, they're going to take him off the field now. Guttermuller's coming in. Get 11 tickets. Put his shoe back on. Hey, hurry up, hey, hurry up and run the play now. One, and that's 30, what they're going to do. Five and counting now as the clock starts again on the first down play. They're only going to run it straight ahead. He takes it out to the 43 yard line. Well, he just puts his head down like a fullback. And yeah. Coach uh, Phil Ferris told us before the game, he said, you know, if we'd have had, we had somebody else maybe that was a better quarterback, he said, we'd probably put Stanley at tailback. Yeah. I mean, that's how good a runner yeah. he is. But he's developed into such a good passer this year that it's it's made this offense really go to another level. He pumped it. He's going to go deep on the sideline. Jump ball, and it's knocked down. Good coverage there. Austin Downs, the intended receiver, but Dustin Rethman, a second team All-Ohioan in his own right, was with him stride for stride. Yeah, nice coverage by Rethman there. And Austin Downs trying to, trying to shake uh, Rethman off a little bit with that little shoulder move. You saw it. Rethman's having none of it. Good position there. Shoulders back to the cornerback. Vision. He's playing the football. Nice job. Good discipline there in the secondary. Yeah, and, and there's a corner with a minute left to go. Right. You can't bite on the fake there. Well, you see the corners right now. They're going to cushion the receivers. They're off about five yards. Down here, number eight, Nagel. He's off about ten. Stanley keeps it himself. Couldn't get away. Takes it out over the 40 yard line, and it will be fourth down. Timeout burned here by the Flyers, and they'll have one left. A yeah, very smart team, uh, you know, the, the Flyers. Well coached. And we talked, mentioned the defensive coordinator, Dan Koenig. He's got these guys prepared well. And of All course, right. interesting situation, though. It's fourth and two. If you're Phil Ferris with 53 seconds left, do you go for it? Because if you don't get it, you're going to give them a short field with. You know, four, maybe 40 seconds to go and a half, or do you just right. punt it away and play it safe yeah, and here? I think the risk reward right now is balanced. You know, when you're moving the sticks versus giving them the ball with great field position. I think you go for it. I think you hurry up and run to the line of scrimmage. Try the hard count. Do we have any timeouts left? Well, they got one mm -hmm. timeout. I don't know if you burn it. Uh, but you, know, you go up there, run to the line of scrimmage, try the hard count, and then certainly have a play. But what they do well. Uh, is get to the line of scrimmage in a hurry in their run game. They play extremely fast. And I think that's what, well, I know that's what's keeping them in this football game. All right, so we'll see what the call it looks like they're going to go for it. You got to see a yeah. punter out there. They won't huddle. They'll run to the line of scrimmage and get set up. And that's exactly what they do. Stanley goes under center. Fourth and two. Hard camp trying to draw them off. Nothing doing so far. And now they call the timeout. So that was the idea. Got to get him to jump. They weren't biting. And now they'll, in all likelihood, punt it away. And, and I love the, the play action. You know, short yardage, goal line situations. I love the play action because it really puts the linebackers in a bad spot. Uh, they've got to defend the run, then all of a sudden, bam, when they realize, uh uh, he's throwing the football, you've got to turn and get out of there, and it's just very difficult. Remember that, because I want to bring this up later. Okay. First, first, though, we're going to take a look at the Trimble uh, All Ohioans, and they've got a slew of them. First teamers Austin Downs, Connor Stanley, John Stevens, Jacob Coons, and of course, Mike McCouch was a third team All Ohio selection. Terry Simmerly, by the way, the strong safety, who stands five foot four. Talk about a kid that plays with a ton of heart. He was a special mention all Ohio. We're gonna punt the ball now. Yep, Tristan oh, Conway back to the way. Oh, away. Oh, 53 seconds to go in the hand. Come after it, and they almost got to it. Gets it away. Oh, no, Wilk is gonna let it bounce, and it will go out of bounds at the 29 yard line. 43 seconds to go in the half. Smart decision by Coach Phil. That ball, make them travel another 30 yards with 43 seconds. Especially the way your defense has played. They've come up with some big stops. Sure. They, they've bent, but they yeah. haven't broken. Don't, right. don't put them in That's a bad right. spot now at the end of the half. Don't put them, in a, put them in position to win. That's what coaches are for. And there they do it with the punt. Smart play. You're still one score. It's nothing. You're, you're still in this football game. Two scores. Yeah. 
You know, I mean, you're, you're still in the game with your playing catch up. Flyers do have one timeout remaining. And remember, the clock stops on a first down. Launching it deep downfield, and it was nearly intercepted. Great coverage once again. Austin, or excuse me, Justice Jenkins was all over his man. And there was good safety help as well. Yeah, now you see the confidence that Coach Goodwin has in his offense coming out, rifling that ball downfield, trying to make a play. Good job by Jacob Kish coming over to yeah. hammer the intended receiver, take him out of it, and they were looking for Ryan Brooms. That's the big guy. What's he stand, about 6'6", 6'7", 6'7", 205, Junior. Talk about a mismatch. I think you know, Jake Kish is the biggest defender in the uh, Tomcat secondary. He stands 6'2". Berkey, quick throw out to Hunter Wilkins. And he'll get the first down and duck out of bounds at the 40-yard line with 32 ticks of the clock remaining here in the half. It's just a very efficient offense uh, Coach Goodwin has. Uh, run. I mean, they just do so many things well. You know, it's play action, run, quarterback run, uh, getting the ball downfield, and it, yeah, just very impressive. This no is an they... offense that during the regular season averaged 37 right. points a game. In the playoffs, they're averaging 46. Right. <laughs> and they've yeah. taken it up right. a notch. <laughs> well, it shows you how tough that conference is. No doubt. First and 10. Berkey. Oh, what a dunk. Perfectly thrown past to Hunter Wilson's corner. That was a frozen rope up to about the 40. Three yard line of Trimble. Yeah, and a frozen rope, and you'll see here into some traffic. I mean, it's pretty good coverage. You see Kish working over from a safety position. There's Stanley coming over as well. I mean, you know, not bad coverage in the secondary, just great accuracy. 17 yard completion. And still 26 seconds left. They have that timeout in their back pocket. One more big play, and they can go for the end zone. Berkey swings it downfield. It, it is. Did he hold on to it? Oh my, a sensational catch by Troy Holman in traffic. He got hit, the ball was coming out. Somehow he held on. Watch the toughness of Holman. They're working over the middle, but he knows he's gonna get hit. So might as well catch the football, huh? They snap it quickly. Going to the end zone, going for Brooms. It's caught inside the five down at the three yard line. They go to the jump ball and the big man comes down with it. And there are nine seconds left in the half. Flyers still have a timeout remaining. Yeah, the bigger Bruins, the six, seven Bruins, working against the smaller Stanley, maybe stands about 5'10". That's like you said, the Bruins an excellent basketball player. That's just a jump ball situation right there. Nine seconds left in the half. Berkey, there's the quarterback. Quick throw to the end zone, and it's knocked away nicely by Justice Jenkins. He was going for Holman, but Jenkins was right there with him. And textbook coverage as he swatted it to the ground. Take a look at it here. See the arm strength and by the quarterback, Berkey. He just stands flat footed and slings it out there. With excellent coverage. That only took two seconds off the clock. And by Jenkins, just nice job of timing that, not interfering with the receiver for a key pass break down. Seven seconds left in the half. But he runs it, and he's into the end zone for the touchdown. And the Bruins couldn't bring it down, and Berkey powers his way to pay dirt, and it's 13 to nothing, Flyers. Now, that was a very impressive drive. When you consider Trimble punted, made him go the long field, and they just, I mean, they were like a machine yeah, going down the field on very, this drive. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they started from the, the first play they ran. They were throwing the football, so you knew what their intention was, getting that ball in the end zone. And there to cap it off, they go with the quarterback OT, counter OT. Peyton Kramer's extra point try is blocked. I think it was blocked at the line of scrimmage, so it's no good. And it's 13 to nothing. With two seconds left to go here in the first half. Now Adam Berkey, a couple of nice throws on this drive, but how about this catch? Hit, balls loose, and Holman hangs onto it, secures it against his chest. That was a tremendous grab. And then the jump ball to the big guy, Ryan Bruins, who pulls it in, steps out at the three, and then Berkey punches it in. 
And the Flyers with a very impressive late drive here at the end of the first half to go ahead 13 to nothing. There are 92 boys who attend the school at Marion Local. 63 of those 92 are on the football that? team. How about that? And just to show you the difference between Division 7 and Division 1, the game that just finished earlier, Mentor, Moeller, and Mentor, they have over 1,000 boys. Yeah. Well, and that, you know, again, the Ohio High School Athletic Association realigned. And you've got this seventh division now, and so it spreads things out. I think it, it, the attempt is to sort of level the playing field for more schools. Competitive balance, and they've done that. Especially at the Division One and Two level, where you've taken those lower before those lower tier Division One teams, and they've bumped down in and out of Division Two, and I think it has been more competitive. Split kick. And it's going to go out of bounds, and so out of bounds. a penalty on Marion Local, and the Tomcats will get the ball. But again, only two seconds left on the clock here in the first half. That's not good news there as Justice Jenkins is a little at hitching a giddy up as he yeah. tries to get off the field. A little sore. Yeah, he's, he's feeling it right there. He's got he's, he's both sides of the ball. They're playing their hearts out. So they'll snap it, take a knee, and go into the locker room at halftime. But Jenkins looks like he's in a lot of pain in that backfield. We'll see if he can return in the second half. He's slowly going off. Toward the Trimble locker room. That could be a huge casualty for the Tomcats if he's unable to continue. Very impressive first half for the Marion local Flyers. And when you consider that last drive was just a thing of beauty. They took over and marched it right down the field. They threw it six times and only had one running play, and the one running play was the one that took him into the end zone for the touchdown. So the Flyers are two quarters away from a third consecutive state championship victory here in Maslin. And for the Trimble Tomcats, still a lot of football left, and they've got a great opportunity to still make a game out of this. Down to the field we go. Lindsay is with Coach Tim Goodwin. Coach, earlier this week you told me you were a little concerned about your team matching the excitement of Trimble. How do you feel they're doing so far? Uh, it's a battle. You know, it, it really is. Uh, you know, Trimble's playing hard. You know, I, th I think we left a, a touchdown or so out there, but, you know, i got to give credit to them. They're playing hard. And what kind of adjustments would you like to see your team make here in the second half in order to extend this lead? Uh, I think we just need to settle down and, and finish drives. Uh, you know, I, I, th I think we got a good idea what, what we're going to face, so we just got to settle down and do our thing. All right, thanks so much, Coach. Good luck. Guys? All right, thanks a lot, Lindsay. 13 to nothing. The Marion Local Flyers lead the Triple Tomcats in the Division 7 State Championship game. Stay tuned for the Wayside Furniture Halftime Report. Frank and I will be back with the third quarter shortly. They go to the screen. Gunnamill has got a convoy in front of him. He won't be touched into the end zone. He goes. And the Flyers strike first. A 20 yard screen pass for the touchdown. The first of two Marion local touchdowns in this low scoring affair so far in the first half of the Division 7 state championship. Marion local up 13 0 over Trimble as we only have one half of football left to play in these seven state championship games over three days. Hi everyone, welcome to the Wayside Furniture Halftime Report. Wayside Furniture, better furniture, price lower. Dave Chodowski with you here in the Hyundai Studios. Coach Powers, Ryan Cavanaugh. Guys, what do you think of this first half? Coach, I'm going to send it over to you. Do you think it's a sense of uh, one team playing with more urgency than the other, but the one not playing with a ton of urgency seems to be the team that's winning. 
Yeah, I'm watching Marion Local out there, and it, it's, it seems like they're a little bit complacent. They're not playing any, any sense of urgency, any bit of tempo. Their tempo's kind of even slow. And then you look at Trimble, on the other hand, that's clearly a team who is playing with their hair on fire right now. Every single play is important to them. They just don't match up talent-wise. But emotion-wise and, and fire and want to, I think they are exceeding what uh, Marion Local's doing right now. Yeah, the hair on fire because the Red Mohawks. That's what <laughs> talking about. But I agree with you, and here's the key for Marion Local. Yes, they're winning the football game. I think personally they could run the ball on Trimble all the way up and down the field, and they've done a lot of passing, try to mix it in. Also important, when you're playing a team like Trimble who thrives on emotion, who is here on an emotional upswing, and clearly they're the underdog in this game. You don't want them to hang around, and right now they are. Well, Coach Goodwin said that his team left a touchdown probably on the field there, and we'll see if, if that plays a factor later on, if Trimble can get any momentum. Let's take a look at the first half highlights and see how we have gotten to this point. And, guys, this is a great play, a great design right here. J.C. Guttemuller getting it from Adam Burke, don't you think? Yeah, that's a phenomenal play call right there. The backside throwback screen, the defense all flow to the right side. There was nobody there to, to block on the left side. And that made it 7-0. This is a mistake here for Trimble, guys, because they could have gotten some points on the board to let that happen. Not a good idea. Connor Stanley, two-time All-State, or trying to make something happen, but when you're in the red zone, you have to be extra specially careful with the football. Yeah, that might hurt there. And then Guttemuller here with the fumble, and it's recovered by Trimble. I mean, really, so far with these highlights, besides the touchdown, things going Trimble's way. They sure are. The only problem is they're all happening in their own red zone. And of course, the big guy, Adam Burke, right at the end of the half. That's a tough one for Trimble because they're getting the ball in the second half, guys. They were down one score. Yeah, because if you think about it there, it was only 7 nothing, and that happened just before halftime, and they made some key plays, some great catches, too. There's been a lot of great catches in this game. The receivers did a great job of using their hands, holding on to the ball if they're getting hit. The thing is, they play with a faster tempo that time. That drive was a fast tempo, and they needed to come out in the second half and go with that same tempo. Otherwise, they're going to be in for a dogfight. Berkey leading the way for Marion Local. We'll talk more about him as we go on here in the halftime show. But let's talk about some key plays from the first half. And we're going to go back to that fumble, guys. Uh, what happens here? Well, first of all, he gets secured and then he gets hit from behind. So anytime you get hit, and J.C. Guttemore, the running back, and then it's the backside pursuit, helmet on the football, pops it loose. And then, Coach, you know, you didn't like this call. No, not at all. Usually when you get a turnover, you always look for the big play, the big swing. But you always got to be aware you're at in the line, okay? You want to be in the plus yard, which means your 50-yard line going in, not inside your own 15, 20-yard line. That was a case of uh, uh, maybe trying to do – you know, playing outside yourself, trying to make something happen that wasn't there. So you would have liked that play if it would have been more around midfield or maybe even the 40 either way, but deep in territory like that, bad idea. Because you're going backwards. Anytime you do a reverse that, you're going at least 10, 12 yards backwards, and they lost. They went from first and 10 to second and 18, and it just, it just was just a bad decision, I think. So Trimble's got to clean up some mistakes there. The flip for the interception, that play there after the fumble, they, they start cleaning things up. They can be in this game in the second half. We have much more to come here on the Wayside Halftime show here from downtown Cleveland Hyundai Studios. We will take a look at the key players so far in the first half. 13-0, Marion Local in the lead. We'll be back right after this timeout on Sports Time Ohio. Little again, inside the 15. It's picked up by Trimble and they've got it back at the 14-yard line. And Trimble not able to take advantage of that Marion Local fumble as right now at halftime. It's Marion Local 13, Trimble nothing. This is the Division 7 state championship game, the final of seven here over Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Marion Local trying to go back to back to back as we have five teams trying to go back to back. Four of them have already done it. Marion Local one half away from going back to back. And as I mentioned, making it three in a row and bring home another state championship to the Mighty Mac. I'll tell you, we've seen today with Coldwater and Marion Local why this conference is so tough, right? Yeah, we always said, you know, the, the, we said the regular season schedule is so difficult, the playoffs become easy. Coldwater showed it, and now it looks like Marion Local's going to do the same thing. Let's take a look at some of the key players in the first half in this one, and we'll start with the team in the lead, and that's Marion Local and their quarterback, Adam Berkey. And we've definitely seen some signs of why he is so good so far in the first half. Yeah, you watch him, he makes all the throws. He's six foot six, he's got a rock of an arm, and it, it seems sometimes, again, like maybe the game's too easy for him. He had a few throws that should have been intercepted in this first half, a little nonchalant throws to the outside that. Uh, 
I, I think it's because the game does come so easy to him. He takes for granted some of these throws. I'm, I'm telling you what, I'm very impressed with what I see. And, I, and I'm even more impressed from the progression of last year. He was a standout, but right now he's matured physically. He's bigger. You see, he still has that movement to get downfield and run. But you mentioned his arm. I mean, this is the best passing quarterback we've seen all weekend, and it's in Division Seven. But and I know he's a Division One recruit. But these comeback routes, these dig routes, he's throwing—they're there, and they're there with zip, and they're right where they're supposed to be. Let me throw this out at you too, because and we haven't talked about this yet at all. But you know, you see it in the NFL quarterbacks that run more, and is it trickled down to high school football? Because we've seen a lot of quarterbacks in this tournament that run just as much as they pass, and we see it with him. I absolutely, I believe so. And, and part of it is the spread offense. A lot of teams are going to the spread with uh, wide receivers out on the field that spreads the defense out and it creates running lanes. Very, very rarely do you see a quarterback at the high school level who's that statue type passer who doesn't have the mobility and can't turn it upfield if he needs to. And the, the funny thing is, that this is actually a trend that started in high school and college and trickled up to the NFL. The NFL was the last one to jump on this bandwagon of running quarterbacks. You know, so I'd say this one actually trickled up if that's possible. Well, good point there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> How about J.C. Guttemuller uh, trying to? to you know, showcase himself after not being able to last year. He has the touchdown, has the fumble. What are your thoughts on his first half? I think he's an excellent running back. Three carries last year, and so far he has shown that. What I think Marion Local needs to do is what they did on that first touchdown. As we're going to see, well, this is him running the football. The first touchdown where they got it out on that backside screen, and uh, they need to get it to him in space because he's very quick. And here's the play right here. Watch how quick he is. And uh, makes people miss, which is very impressive. And another thing, too, is it looks like he put a little bit of weight on from last year. He looks a little bulkier, a little more sturdier. He's finishing all his runs going forward. I've not seen him yet take a hit and go backwards on any of his runs today. And when we talk about Trimble, would you guys agree that if they are going to come back in this game, it's a guy we featured in the pregame show, and it's Connor Stanley? Absolutely. And, and Coach Ferris said it. We're going to put the ball in his hands, and he's going to win or lose the football game for us. And so far, as Stanley has shown up. You know, there's that one obvious error on the interception. But I said he throws a great deep ball. He gives his receivers oh, a chance. Yeah. And let's not forget about his contributions on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, the kid's coming up and laying the wood to some guys on defense also. And then, you know, at that one interception, I'm going to give him credit because at least he's trying to make something happen. This kid is an ultimate competitor, and you can see it in everything he does. He will not go down with the first hit, and he will not, you know, give up on a play till the last possible minute. Yes, yeah, certainly he's trying to make a play. The unfortunate part is it didn't work out. It's an interception. Yeah. Yeah. And it's Marion Local. You can't let that happen uh, no. against such a, a great team like that. But one thing, maybe we're seeing this tough schedule that Trimble had to play to get to this game is paying off because they're definitely battle-tested. They are, and I think it's going to pay off in the second half. And the reason for that is they faced adversity and they've responded appropriately. They have adversity now. They're down 13-0 to and who is unquestionably the best team in the state in their division. That being said, guys, they get the football and they have have shown they can move the ball against Marion Local. Okay, this is the Wayside Halftime Report. We have more coming up after this timeout. The keys for each team in the second half. 13-0, Marion Local in the lead. Bundle up. Yeah, it's cold outside. Get your refreshment uh, inside. We have one more half of football to go. We'll be back after this timeout in Sports Time Ohio. The Mighty Mac going for another state title. Coldwater got another one today. It's fourth, and the total count now up to 29. If Marion Local holds on, it will be at 30. Best conference in the state of Ohio. Dave Chodowski back with you. Hyundai Studios, this is the Wayside Halftime Report. Marion Local up 13-0. Final thoughts here, guys. Ryan Cavanaugh. Uh, Trimble holding Marion Local. I mean, Marion Local not close to what it usually averages offensively. Yeah, throughout the season, 37 points a game in the playoffs, 46 points a game. They're sitting at 13 right now. If I'm Marion Local, the key to the second half is pick up where you left off. Do exactly what you did to close out that first half. That's Adam Bertke's arm and Adam Bertke's legs. Steady diet of Adam Bertke gets you in the end zone. I'll tell you what. That 13 points shouldn't be a surprise because Trimble's defense had eight shutouts on the year, gave up 37 points in the regular season. So their defense is solid. We know that. But the key to this game is going to be the first five minutes of the second half. If Trimble cannot, can get something going, get points on the board, get momentum going, and prove they can score offensively, we're going to have a ball game in our hands. If not, it could be a long night for them. And Coach, as we've talked about, this guy's amazing to watch football with, isn't he? His hey, prediction, the way he game. sees football, he calls halfback passes, they happen, everything, onside kicks, whatever. For Coach Powers, Ryan Cavanaugh, I'm Dave Chodowski. We'll see you post game as we head back out to Matt Underwood, Frank Stams with the rest of the call, the D7 state title game, 13 0 at halftime. We'll see you after this game goes final.
The Ohio High School Athletic Association State Football Championships on Sports Time Ohio are brought to you by Discount Drug Mart. We save you the runaround. By Hyundai. Come test drive the fun to drive 2013 Sonata. Visit NorthernOhioHyundaiDealers.com. And by Time Warner Cable. Enjoy the most sports on the most devices no matter where you are, only with Time Warner Cable. Getting ready for the third quarter, Matt Underwood with Frank Stamps. Frank, you mentioned to me at halftime there were three big plays in your mind in the first half. The first one was the interception thrown by Connor Stanley when they were deep in uh, Marion local territory. And then the big That's pass the big plays play on the last right drive. There, the Holman right here, the other big play, DeBrunes, the big tight end going up. And that sets up this touchdown run by Berkey. Three plays in the first half make are making it made a difference. And that's why we're looking at, well, that's why we have a 13-0 score. Well, I, obviously Trimble needs to do a little better job of making some headway on first down. Just one yard uh, averaging on first down. So that obviously puts you in second and long, third and long situation. Right. Yeah, I mean, you talk about the explosive plays of the plays of 10 yards plus. Look at Marion. 10 of those, yeah, they've had 10 plays of 10 plus yards, and then Trimble, it's just hard yardage out there. They're fighting yeah. for it, and just not after that first drive, which was outstanding, they've not been able to get anything going. What do the Trimble Tomcats need to do to get back in this football game? We'll see if Lindsey got any answers from Trimble's head coach, Phil Ferris. Coach, being down here at the half, what was one of the first things that you said to your team in the locker room? Well, you know, we told them playing the best team in the state, and you're only down two scores. Uh, I said we've had missed tackles, missed blocks, missed interceptions, and uh, missed call plays by the coach. You know, if we just straighten all that up second half, we get the ball first. Uh, two scores, we win this thing. And can you see, are you going to be making any specific adjustments here in the second half? Uh, we just got to tackle better, and uh, you know, you know, we've got to be able to block better. You know, they're, they're sending a lot of people, and we're not blocking them. All right. Well, thanks so much, Coach. Good luck. Right. Guys? Thanks a lot, Lindsay. Well, I mean, and he's right. It's pretty simple. Hey, yeah, he's real simple because I tell you what I've seen throughout the playoffs, Matt, is poor tackling. Well, let's revisit our keys to the game brought to you by Wayside Furniture. Better furniture price lower. And for the Flyers, they're playing their game. That's a pretty good first half right there. 236 total yards and only one turnover. I w I'm sure they wish they had that back. But the Triple Tomcats, they've got to play mistake free. They didn't do that. They had the ball inside the red zone. They're going in for the score. Came up with the interception. And, uh, you know, that's just too costly. That takes points off the board. Phil Ferris has been a longtime head coach, 20 years, I believe, at, at Trimble. And he told us before the game, look, he, he, he wasn't going to build the Flyers up for his club. He, they watched the game films. His kids came away with a pretty good feeling. Like, hey, coach, we saw some things in there. They're beatable. They're not, they're not a perfect team. But he told us that they, he felt like his team had to play an almost perfect game here tonight in order to win. And uh, so they've, they've definitely got to uh, dress up a few things. Well, the turnovers, the turnover, the, the big yeah, one right. on that drive was costly, obviously. But they're going to need to come up, I think, with some turnovers in the second they, half. Yeah, they're going to need some breaks. They're going to need a short field, maybe a pick six, uh, something along those lines to create a spark. Uh, but, uh, you know, you got to believe. You, you know, you're, you're Trimble, uh, Trimble and you know, the faithful in the stands, that's their theme. you got to believe. I was... They, you know, I had a, a restaurant before the game, between between games, and they had a number of fans in there, and they were chanting, chanting. I mean, mm -hmm. it was all about believing you got to win, you can win this football game. And, uh, and that's what they're they're going to have to stay confident. You know, if they fall back, if they fall behind three scores, now that doubt starts creeping in. And you talked about Coach Ferris. That was the message. Hey, we can still win this mm -hmm. football game. Only down two scores, and really, you know, with two scores, you can take the lead. Trimble will get the football to start the second half. Remember, on their first kickoff that they received, they ran a nifty reverse that netted them a big opening return. This time, a short kick near the sideline. Connor Stanley will take it up over the 20-yard line, and that's about all he'll get. Tomcats in the first half had a very impressive 11 play drive Got down to the five yard line but the interception on the third and goal play turned it over since then they've, they've just been absolutely stymied 
And hey, give credit to right. where it's due. And there's this a reason. Is, they've there's been no stunned. joke they're playing. Right. Two time defending yeah. state champs, a defense that has now forced 28 turnovers on the year. They've shut out four opponents. They've only given up eight points per game all season long. And point out Peyton Kramer on that defensive line had an excellent first half. And then Joey Schmiederman as well, 42, playing really tough at his backup position. I wrote this note down, and I, I think it's correct, but I gotta almost want to go back and double check it to make sure. Only one of the 14 opponents the Marion Flyers played this year scored more than 14 points. Talk about a tough defense. Yeah, that's the that's the bottom line when it comes to uh, playing defense is that uh, how you rank in, in defensive scoring. Connor Stanley, quick pass, and it's intercepted. Coming back the other way, intercepted by Peyton Kramer, the second team All-Ohioan. He had six sacks, a fumble recovery coming into this game tonight. Now he has an interception right, to his resume for the season. He had an outstanding first half. He's picking up right where he left off. Great vision right there. He knows he's not going to get to the quarterback. So what's he do? He gets into the passing passing lane right there. And then the timing on his jump leads to the pick. And that's great hands for a defensive lineman that when that ball's being thrown, there you're about you know 15 yeah. feet away from you to come up with that catch. Terrific job by Kramer, and he gives his offense the ball at the 11-yard line. They load him up in the box. They pitch it out. And cut him over to the five into the end zone for the touchdown. JC cut him over, carries it in, and the Flyers extend their lead. His 19th rushing touchdown on the year. Great call by Coach Goodwin and his staff. They really stack the inside of that defense, and they go with the toss to the outside to cut him over. Got a molar. He gets nice blocking, down blocking there, kick out on the defensive end, the support, and he breaks, cuts it up in there, finds the seam for the score. They're going to go for two here. Berkey lines up with Got a molar behind him. Play action fake. Berkey guns it to the end zone, and Holman couldn't come up with it. Defended nicely. By Austin Downs. So they quickly turn this interception into points. Like, again, that's a fantastic play by a defensive end. Great reaction by the defensive end, Kramer. And then you see the touchdown run here by Guttemuller. Gets it to the outside and the toughness finishing yeah. that run. Watch this. Turns it up. He can smell the end zone. Bam. He gets it across, stays in bounds. He knows it. And they told us, some of the folks from Maria Stein, that Guttemuller been a little gimpy throughout the season. He's had an ankle injury that has persistently bugged him. And so some of his numbers may not be all that eye popping compared to other backs, maybe. But <laughs> you can obviously see why he's a tremendous football player. But Peyton Kramer set it up with the interception, number 52. And now it's a 19 to nothing lead for the Marion local Flyers. He does it all. Picks off passes and now kick kicks it off. off. <laughs> 11.08 to go here in the third quarter. This will be similarly from a seven yard line. This is Jenkins, and he is smothered at the 20 yard line. They didn't buy it that time. Slagle coming up to make the stop. Downstairs, once again, we go to Lindsay. Yeah, guys, this Trimble team looking a little deflated right now, but definitely some players trying to rally up the team to try and get some energy going and try and get some points up on this board. Back to you guys. All right, thanks, Lindsay. And this is a Trimble. You know, ball club that you know they've been tested this year. They you know they've had some tough ball games. They in the playoffs they, they beat Steubenville Catholic Central 27 to 22. Came from behind to beat Shady Side. Had a tough one against Western Reserve in the state semifinal game. Beat them 14 to 10. But I don't think there's any question that this is the best team they've seen this year. And now 
they're in a 19 to nothing hole. Yeah, without a doubt. And they're in a hole right right off the bat on on first down. You know, a two one two yard gain on first down. They've got to do better than that. They've got to start putting themselves in a position where it's second and short, third and short, where those those conversion rates are much more manageable. They're just not controlling the line. Well, Marion Local is controlling the line. Second down and eight, Stanley under duress. Try to spin away. Stays on his feet. Somehow he got away and picked up a couple of yards. That was a tremendous individual effort to just avoid being sacked. Brandon Pranger, number eight, he had him dead to rights. Couldn't bring him down. All right, he breaks, I think, four tackles right here. You see, he's scrambling for his life. That's one, two, three. All right, stays on his feet. Three tackles. That's great effort by Stanley. He had one person in the pass route back there. He thought he, he'd think he'd get better protection up front. Third down and seven. Flyer show blitz. They bring a bunch. Trying to get the screen set up. He gets it away. And it's intercepted again. This time it's Chris Lochtefeld with, believe it or not, his second interception on the year. So these defensive linemen from Maria Stein are making like D backs. Uh, this is a mistake by Stanley on this, trying to get the ball to Coons, number 42. Does a great job of avoiding the rush, but just doesn't see Lochtefeld there. Poor decision. Now that ball's got to have a little bit of loft on it to get the ball to Coons. His third interception now on the night, and again, the Flyers with a short field at the 24 yard line. Berkey. It's Holden down near the 20 yard line. He's going to pick up almost nine yards on that reception. It will be second down and short. I tell you, Matt, I, I can't tell you how impressed. I mean, I'm impressed with, you know, the efficiency at which Marion Local plays offensively and connecting with their passes. But, you know, there, there's not a whole lot of yardage after the catch. When those catches are made, the, the, the defenders there in the backfield, Kish, Simmerly, Downs, Jenkins, they're right there to get them down. I mean, their, their coverage in the secondary is outstanding. Berkey guns it inside again. Holman again on the slant, takes it down inside the five-yard line. Other than the one sack when the Flyers uh, were just overwhelmed by the Tomcats uh, in that first half, they haven't had many negative plays. No. The Flyers offense has been very, as you said earlier, efficient. Not a lot of flashy big plays, but seven, eight, nine yards a pop here tonight. And, and Berkey on the keeper. Touchdown. And Berkey in the end zone for the second time tonight as the Flyers extend their lead. And they just quickly have converted two turnovers into two touchdowns here in the third quarter. And then saw the turnover. That'll kill you, give them a short field. You know, they, we've seen what they could do right before the half. They go, you know, about 65, 70 yards for the score. You give them a short field, and the odds increase even that much more for them to score. And they love that quarterback run inside the 10 yard line. Kramer with the extra point try. This one's right down the middle. Up and good. And the Maria Stein, Marion Local Flyers have extended their lead to 26 to nothing, looking for their third consecutive state championship. They're well on their way here tonight. Local Flyers pulling away, leading it 26 to nothing. And some of the kids have taken to the snowbanks. If you want to watch this game again, with Time Warner Cable, you can enjoy sports better. Look for this game and other high school regular season and state championship games only on Time Warner Cable Local On Demand, Channel 411. Pause, fast forward, rewind, even do instant replays only from Time Warner Cable. Enjoy better. I remember that game. They, they call that King of the Hill. Oh, yeah. How about in college football earlier, Auburn beat Missouri 59 to 42. Wow, that was a shootout, huh? Oh, that makes Auburn's case for you know, that title game even stronger. Kickoff will be taken by Downs. 
taken by the number 10. A move up across the 25 yard line. And the Trimble Tomcats go back to work offensively. Let's go back to that last interception on the screenplay. What should he have done here? Just throwing it right in the turf? <laughs> the simple, smart aleck answer is not throwing the football right there. He's got to get aloft that ball a little bit, get it over the head uh, of the uh, defender. Uh, Cloth the felt, I'm sorry, lock the felt, get it over his head, loft it a little bit, and get it out to Coons. We're still in formation. They go to Jacob Coons, and he takes it out to the 30 yard line. Jacob Coons, a senior, came in averaging a little over four yards a carry on the year. Jacob Kish now taking over at quarterback for the Trimble Tomcats looking down on the sideline trying to see if Connor Stanley is injured or oh, he's actually on the field. They've just got him just moving people around a little bit. Trying to find some trying to find some answers. Some, yeah, something been, works. Yeah, it's it's rough going between the tackles right now. Flyers are shutting them down in the run game and then of course coming up with picks in the passing game. So hand it off to Stanley and there's nowhere to go. Back to the 35 yard line. But that was Adam Berkey who came up initially to make the hit and Joe Schwederman, the linebacker, finished him off. Obviously, when you've got linebackers like Hunkler and Schwederman who have logged over a hundred tackles and Brandon Pranger also has 100 tackles on the year. That tells you that you're getting good safety support, good defensive line play. That's right, defensive line play, letting those guys fly to the football. And plus, you've got guys that are sure tackles. They're not missing it. Punt is away. Dies down at the 40-yard line, and that's where the Tomcats will down it. I mean, I talked about that earlier. We saw, you know, that was a point of emphasis for Coach Ferris coming out at halftime. Hey. You know, we've got to be better tacklers. Last year, Marion Local took on Newark Catholic, and with 21 seconds left, Hunter Wilker, his third touchdown of the day, put him up 28-21. Newark Catholic had one last untimed down after a pass interference call. It was knocked away, and the Flyers held on to win their sixth state championship. They're closing in on number seven. They lead 26 to nothing. Still a lot of time, though, left to go. 6.42 remaining here in the third quarter. Hunter Wilker trying to get wide. Out of bounds at about the 42-yard line. Wow. I want to recognize, I think that's Jacob Altier there from the defensive end position. Just does an outside, uh, outstanding job of stringing along. There's Micah Couch as well. Good defensive play there. That's Couch at left defensive end, stringing along. And then, then coming off the blocker and making that play. It's exactly the way that you practice that and teach it. Looks at the moment, but good coverage there. This was a little high. Down is down, knocked it away. There have only been six teams in the advent of the playoff format in Ohio high school history to win three in a row. Cincinnati Moeller in the 70s, St. Ignatius won four straight. Delta St. John, part of this conference that Maria Stein, Mary Local Hales from Newark, Catholic Versailles also from that Midwestern Athletic Conference in Ursuline. So they're trying to become the seventh team to win three in a row. Berkey guns it. Oh, that's an absolute laser throw, and he hits home and right between the two and the four down to the 42-yard line of the Trimble Tomcats. That play has been there all night all day long. long. Great route running by the receivers, especially Holman. And watch the gun that Berkey has. Good setup, nice little look off, and then the rifle there. Working in front of Downs, and you know, that coverage is just late coming down on the slant. They can't get to it in time. Got a bowler. Take the handoff. 
He's going to take it down near the 35 yard line. On JC. Maria Local has had to overcome some injuries this year. We mentioned before at one point they were down to their emergency fourth string quarterback. And Tim Goodwin told me, you know, it's one of those years where it's not necessarily that they have depth because they have great numbers. But he said, we've just had kids who have been versatile enough to maybe switch and move positions and fill some gaps from time to time for them. Here comes home and they're going to throw it back. He was downfield wide open. Just shy of the goal line. Austin Albers pulled it in, and Austin Downs tackled him inside the five. They'll mark him down at the one yard line, but Albers was wide open. He just had to wait on the ball. Otherwise, that would have been an easy touchdown. Yeah, he's, he's wide open here. A nice little piece of razzle dazzle. Not the prettiest ball being thrown, but effective. And that's why he had to wait on it. Albers waits on that, comes down with the catch. Just short of the end. Went for 36 yards. And now Berkey lines up on the center. Give it the gutter molar. And he will go into the end zone. It's his third touchdown of the night. Second rushing TD. And it's now 32 to nothing. Flyers. Gutter molar started the scoring tonight when he took a screen pass into the end zone in the first quarter. And that gave the Flyers the early lead. It stayed that way, seven to nothing, until less than a minute to go in the first half when the Flyers converted on a long drive to make it 13 to nothing at the break. And they have just poured it on here in the third quarter, taking advantage of a couple of turnovers. And this one is right down the middle. The Flyers pulling out all the stops as they seek a third consecutive state crown. They lead it 33 to nothing. <laughs> 33 to nothing. Marion Local with 433 still left to go here in the third quarter. The Mount Union Purple Raiders are in the quarterfinals of the Division III playoffs. They'll battle Wesley for the right to move on to another national championship. Catch the game tonight right here on Sports Time Ohio. Triple Tomcats will get the football back here. But they are in a gigantic hole now. There's a high kick deep taken by Simmerly at the six yard line. Simmerly faked the uh, reverse that time. He kept it himself, takes it up over the 24 yard line. He's fun to watch, Simmerly. Yeah. So is this guy, J.C. Guttemuller. See that big ankle brace on his right ankle. He's been hobbled throughout the season, but he took that opening screen pass for the game's first touchdown. Good hard running to get in the end zone there. This is a little capper right here, his third TD of the night. First and 10, Connor Stanley goes back to the quarterback spot with an eye formation backfield. The counter, nothing doing. Oh my, snuffed out beautifully by the nose tackle, Jason Brunswick. Brunswick was just basically sitting there, and, he, and you know, a lot of times on that counter, you get smoked. He just stood right. his ground. You know, and that's something that's very easy. You can very easily get, you know, out of position or go with the the initial fake. But that time, Br Brunswick, he shows great discipline. And that tells me that they're prepared well for the attack that Trimble's come in with. He's staying at home, being gap sound and making a nice play. Good hard running up over the 25-yard line by Justice Jenkins. It'll bring up third down. And here, you know, you got we got another th uh, third down and you know seven plus. It's just it's just very hard to convert uh, when you get the third and extra longs and the second and extra longs. Yeah, this is going to go for a third and eight. They need the 34 yard line. Stanley will go to the spread. They 
and bring pressure They're on the slip screen and it's incomplete. Petamuller was closing in a hurry and I think Jenkins heard him coming. Well, they're playing with a lot of confidence. So you can see, you talk about the pressure. I mean, they're getting off blocks, getting to the quarterback, they're getting to Stanley. They're pressuring the ball in the perimeter. Uh, they're just, you know, out there and they can smell it. They're making plays. Yeah, it's one of those cases where if you're Phil Ferris right now, it's not a whole lot of fun because Marion Local has an answer for everything you're trying to do. Right, right. Creating turnovers. And they're just, uh, you know, just hitting on all cylinders right now. Tristan Conway's not nearly blocked. He gets off a beauty. Hunter Wilker on the return. Takes it down to about the 43-yard line. Mentioned before that uh, Trimble, the high school is located in, in Gloucester, Ohio, which is about 90 minutes uh, southeast of Columbus. Athens County. It's an old mining town, and, and a lot of the players uh, during the offseason took part in uh, a beautification project. They, they took part in helping the local community paint and restore some of the downtown buildings. And, uh, it's, it's, it's another example of how that community has really yeah. come together. Yeah, I love that. that. That effort was spearheaded by Jim Cotter, you know, pr fixing up the stadium, fixing broken, w broken windows, painting the stadium. You know, the, 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 the old economy, as they say, might not be what it once was, but it doesn't mean you still can't have pride in your community, and that's what those folks have definitely done a great job to try and restore. Yeah. And this football team has, has brought a lot of those people together. And it, yeah. Hey, I mean, this it, isn't going well tonight, no. but it's not in any way going to dampen the 14 weeks of absolute joy and fun that they have experienced. And, this it, football sh team. and it should. They brought a, a, a with the football tonight. JC got a Miller. Takes it ahead for a couple of yards. You know, and it's interesting too. I thought Tim Goodwin uh, told us earlier in the week, he said, you know, we actually have had our eye on Trimble all year long because last year we were getting ready to play Newark Catholic and they had played Trimble and we saw the game film. We said, ooh. His team's pretty good over here from uh, from Trimble. So he said, we started watching them all season long and watching as each week progress. They kept winning. We said, you know what? Don't be surprised if down the line, that's a team we might end up seeing again. <laughs> that's a sign of a smart head coach keeping a book on all your possible competition. Beautiful pass, another wide open. <laughs> Inside the 25, leaps down to the 24-yard line. Well, he has had a terrific night catching the football and whether it's been in traffic or free and easy, he's made a lot of nice catches. Yeah, moving the pocket, extending the play right there. Holman does a nice job of getting his numbers back to the quarterback there and making himself available for the nice pitch and catch. That's the job of a receiver there to get yourself noticed. Thinking Adam Burkey might want to take Troy Holman with him to pit. <laughs> Down to the 20-yard line. And that carry goes Aaron Neatfield. Neatfeld will be back next year. He's just a sophomore. So will J.C. Guttemuller. They'll obviously be looking for another quarterback, but it's always nice when you've got your two running backs returning. Hunter Wilker, one of their wideouts, also just a sophomore. So they'll continue to reload as they always seem to do. Down at Maria Stein. I thought it was also interesting as the clock ticks under a half minute to go here in the third quarter. We'll give it to Neatfeld. He dances up down inside the 15-yard line. Some of the coaches were telling us that these kids who are seniors and the juniors who are right behind them, as seventh and eighth graders, they won like one game, one game each year. So this was not a group that barreled through the competition of seventh graders and eighth graders and got to the varsity with their chests all puffed out. I mean, these kids have really done it the hard way. They're a lot of hard work. Nico bounces it outside down to the five-yard line. Well, a part of that poor win-loss record as seventh and eighth graders is Coach Goodwin, you know, wants two teams. They, he wants everybody to play a position because you just don't know how these kids are going to develop in high school. And that experience in the seventh and eighth grade is invaluable to get them started 
on that path of development. And of course, here it is where they're juniors and seniors now in high school, and it's paying paying big dividend. Big you're, dividends. You're trying to develop football right. players, not you not can't win. All you the can't games. pigeonhole kids in the seventh and eighth grade and tell tell anybody what that kid's going to be like four years from now. Good point. Oh, terrific effort there. In the backfield, John Stevens. That's why he's a first team All Ohio selection this year. No quit in that young man as time runs out here in the third quarter. He made a good stop. And it will be a second and goal situation for the Flyers when we come back. They have really taken control of the game here in the third quarter. The fourth and final act is next. And we welcome you back to Maslin. The Division 7 state championship game, the final game of our coverage this weekend. So glad to have you with us. It's been fun as it always is to watch these kids come out and lay it all on the line for their schools, for their communities. Here tonight we go to the fourth quarter in D7 and it has been all Maria Stein here in the second half. They have just simply dominated the game as Berkey looks for more. Into the end zone he goes, threw it into a crowd and it's intercepted. I think, did he hold on? Yes yeah, he did. He did. Picked off by Jacob Kish, his sixth interception of the Kish season. And they hold the Flyers off the scoreboard. He really tried to force yeah. one for the only yeah, time he, tonight. And that's what you get for throwing the ball here. Uh, trying to get it in, into coverage right there and, and comes away with Jake Kish comes with comes away with a nice pick. See that that ball is that, that uh, the receivers well defended a number. I've count six or five red shirts around the uh, potential receiver. And they come up with a, a nice turnover. Trimble takes the ball over at their own 20 yard line. Here's Stanley. Fires on the near side a little too tall, though, for Jimmy Ward. And you see Stanley right there trying to get a grip on that football. And we talked about that early, where in these conditions, when the ball's really cold and hard, uh, Getting a good delivery it affects the accuracy. You'll see him. I saw him fumbling around with the football, and as a result, couldn't get a good grip, and the ball sails high. Well, it's just one of those nights where it's brittle. I mean, right. the game time temperature was 20. It's probably down into the teens by now. I've been impressed with some of the catches we've seen from that by the receivers. The Stanley takes the snap, goes ahead over the 20 yard line. Ball's got to feel like. Yeah, it's got to feel like a rock. Trying to catch a, a rock with right. razor blades attached to it. <laughs> Second down. I make it third down and about eight. They need the 30 yard line. <laughs> Substitutions. Yeah. Looks like they're going for more of a passing package here. Now you see Simmerly come in the game. You see Albers come in the game. I'm sorry, not Albers. Jenkins come in the football game. Jimmy Ward flanks out wide to the far side of the formation. Down the middle. Austin Downs almost made a one-handed catch. He reached down for it, tried to pull it in with one hand, but couldn't quite do it. And so fourth down up for Trimble, and they'll have to punt it away. See Stanley leads him a little bit too far. Downs is able to get one paw on it, but can't reel it in. Takes a lot of courage to catch that ball over the middle like that. They're going to punt it away. Tristan Conway. And over end boot. Going to take a bounce. No return. The Flyers will take over at the 50 yard line. We'll go downstairs to Lindsey Raleigh. Yeah, Matt, as you mentioned earlier, there is a popular hairstyle among the Trimble community. The way that Mohawk Mafia got started was Coach Ferris actually teaches sixth grade, and earlier in the year, some of his students who played football decided they were going to do their hair in a Mohawk style. And some of these youngsters actually had 
older brothers who played on the varsity football team and apparently they decided to copy their younger brothers and from that the whole mohawk style just sort of caught fire in Trimble. A lot of the guys on the team began to adopt the new look and they all dyed their mohawks pink for Cancer Awareness Week and then after that dyed them red to show a little school spirit and Coach Ferris said honestly you cannot walk through our elementary school without seeing several red mohawks. They are everywhere. So one, of the, one day the Trimble coaches were watching some of the guys mess around and they all had red mohawks and they said, oh there, look, it's the Mohawk Mafia. And from there, everybody just caught on and ever since then it's stuck. Back to you guys. Well, it's really been impressive to see how it's spread through the community. You see some of the hats, but we, we've seen grown men with with red <laughs> well, mo I, mohawks. I saw a senior, I saw an older lady with a mohawk. I, I, I kid you not, coming into the football game. First down carry. And that looks like Ethan Neatfeld with the carry. There you go, it extends to the goatee right there. Oh yeah, no, I like that look. That's solid right yeah. there. So the uh, the spirit's still running high in the in the crowd for Trimble, and, and as we said before, I mean, it will be obvious disappointment with the way this game has turned out tonight. But it, it, it cannot and should not dampen the enthusiasm in the community for what these young men have accomplished here tonight. We said uh, it had been a long time. 1981 was the last Athens County team to, to win a state championship. Number 11 on the offense. First time in Trimble school history to ever get to a state title game. And so once you once you get here, you you know you put that up in the weight room and it goes up in the locker room and, and the goal is set, the bar is set now for the next generation of Trimble football players. You know. This, right. this group got to the state that's title right. game. Now it's that's, up to the next generation to carry the that, torch. That's a great point. Yeah, you, you, you're getting there, uh, you know, and setting that standard for you know, the juniors and the sophomores. Yeah. Have a good throw by Kirk before. He has really been impressive throwing the football on time, on the money. It's Austin Albers right there for another first down catch. Take a look at the setup by Perky and. Just nice delivery, the strong arm there and, and the accuracy. But I'll go back to something I said earlier, Frank, and that is he's thrown the ball on time. He's thrown it with zip. He's thrown it accurately, but he has had all day yeah, to throw he's it. Had that makes it a little easier for a quarterback. Nobody in his face or at his around his legs. Aaron Neatfeld now carries it down to the 30 yard line. Picks up a couple of yards. It'll be second down and eight. You know, to get here, to get to this championship game, Marion Local had to play their rival Delphi St. John's. They beat them 35 to six. And afterwards, now re remember, this is a team you played during the regular season. Then they beat them in the state semifinal, 35 to six to get here. And after that game, their head coach, Todd, I believe it's pronounced Schulte, he said, quote, that's the state champion right there. Nobody's going to beat them. There's a pitch. Neatfeld coming near side, picks his way down to the 27-yard line. When you've got the respect of a, of a team that you play twice here during the season, that says a lot. Yeah, it does say, say a lot. He recognizes that uh, year in and year out, they have the potential to win the state championship. It's just a matter of you know, getting the consistent play. They've gotten it this year. Adam Berkey goes off to a big ovation from the Maria Stein crowd on hand. The senior will head on to the University of Pittsburgh to play college football next year. And now, Neatfeld carries it down inside the 25 yard line, close to the 24. New quarterback is Dustin Ruthman. Ruthman, a second team All Ohio, and at cornerback. But being that he's only a junior, he, he might be moving into full-time signal calling duties next year. Fourth down and a, about two yards to go for the first down. Everybody loaded up between the tackles. And Neatville will not get it. The Tomcats stop him short, and he'll take it over on downs. 
Seven ten left to go here in the football game. We'll take a timeout. Marion Flyers on top, 33 to nothing. But they were stuffed on this play by Trimble, who gets the ball back. Well, the way this game started off, it was very tight. Marion Local scored early, 7-0. It stayed that way until the final minute of the first half when they got a late touchdown to make it 13-0. Then in the third quarter, turnovers were the difference. They, they led to three touchdowns in the span of six minutes and 35 seconds, and the Flyers turned a close game yeah. into a and, route. And, and really looking back on it, that was a prelude of things to come because they they've got they got the passing game going there on that drive in the third quarter. They just developed it. Hey, Hitch and go. But the ball's fumbled out of bounds. By the way, the in-game summary brought to you by Panini's. A hook and lateral play yeah. right there. Love the, you know, the, 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 the risk on that. Get something going, have some fun out there. Open up that playbook. Been tough going between the tackles, trying to get anything, you know, there with the with the run. So you're gonna have to come up with something. And get that ball moving and get some get that goose egg going. Stanley guns it inside, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Justice Jenkins. Most famous hook and lateral play. Do you remember? You won. Was it Boise? No, the one that I'm thinking of, NFL playoffs back in the early 80s, that epic game between San Diego and Miami down in the Orange Bowl. And the Dolphins were down big early. And they ran it. Forget who caught the pass. He flipped it to Tony Nathan. He went down for a touchdown. You've got a great memory, that man. <laughs> you, you just you really do a great recall. 7 0 1 to go, third down and six. Thomas Stanley going to keep it himself, but he's going to be well shy of the first down. He got up to the 31, but he just didn't have anybody open downfield. They were well covered. No, no, yeah, there was nice coverage. We talked about the coverage there uh, by the, uh, the top cats in the secondary. And really, you know, for the Flyers there, those guys there, you know, got a molar. Uh, Berkey, Nagel, Rethman, you know, they've just taken away all the deep rounds. It's just not allowed any really explosive plays by the Tomcats. Well, and again, you get into these situations and it makes it a little bit easier to, to dial up your defenses when you've got the big lead. Hunt might have been partially yeah. blocked. Hit the, uh, hit the official on the far side of the field out of bounds right at the 40 yard line. We'll take a timeout. 6-16 left to go in the season. And the Marion Flyers closing in on a seventh state title. Marion Local leading big earlier today. Another team from their conference in Division 5, the Coldwater Cavaliers behind Brody Hoing. Ran away from Columbus Bishop Hartley, winning it 24-7. Hoing had three touchdowns in the ballgame. He was simply outstanding. We did that game at 11 o'clock. And I tell you, you talk about a competitive kid. You got him inside the 10 yard line. He was not going to be denied. Flags fly and a play is stopped. Interesting that Adam Berkey's back in there now at quarterback. Dead ball, false start. Number four on the offense, still first out. Yeah, I thought you'd want to get Rethman in there. I mean, those were invaluable snaps because, of course, you know, you want to build for the future. And this any experience in the playoffs, uh, you know, is just going to be make that player that much better next year. First down and 15. He's looking to throw it. Knocked away nicely by Austin Downs. A little surprised the coach has thrown it. Coach Goodwin's thrown it here up 33 to nothing. Take a look at some of the other results. We had the first game of the tournament action on Thursday night when St. Vincent St. Mary won their second consecutive state title 24 to nothing over the Rams of Trotwood Madison. Kirtland won big over Wayne Trace taking some of the sting away from their loss in last year's state title game to Coldwater. Clint Massey beat Mooney in a classic. That was probably the best game of the tournament so far. Although I didn't, I didn't get to see the end of the Division I game. That ended up being a lot closer than I thought it was going to be. 
12 to carry down inside the 40. Looked like the Molar Crusaders were kind of running away from it. Menner came all the way back and made it tight at the very end. Look at the final score, 55-52. So a, a heck of a charge by the Menner Cardinals, but they came up three points short. I'll tell you what, Loveland really impressed me, Frank. I had not oh, uh, had a wow. chance to see them How about play. That? that? That was a really impressive football yeah. team. And uh, obviously the, the weather conditions uh, negated some of what, you know, Glenville can do with their speed and the outside game. But boy, the, the, the Loveland kids played well in football game. And deserve that state championship. <laughs> Dustin Rethman back in there at quarterback. Takes the carry and picks up a few yards. It'll be fourth down and about six. Let me see the effort on both sides of the ball. You see Rethman running with, uh, you know, a lot of authority, uh, getting that, uh, moving that football, and then and Connor, Stan Connor, Connor Stanley coming up, delivering a blow on him. I mean, it's just you know they just continue to fight both sides of the ball, regardless of the score. Under five minutes to go, Rethman was underneath and a heck of a catch made. Low throw, but Hunter Wilker went down and just dug it out. That's a first down. And now they're going to substitute everybody. So the mass substitution for the Marion Flyers. All of the starters look like they are headed to the sideline. They get a huge hand from the crowd who has traveled from southwestern Ohio up here to Maslin for the state championship game. And now a host of substitutions with four and a half minutes to go and counting in the game. Another new quarterback in the ball game, and that is number 14, Dwayne Loigers. Make sure I got Dwayne's name. Uh, yeah, Dwayne Loigers, who's, if this is right, he's just a freshman. Yeah, he's just a freshman. How cool is that to yeah, be a freshman? Very cool. I got some state championship game action. Did you see me? Did you see me, huh? <laughs> That's outstanding. <laughs> but, you know, to your point, too, Connor Stanley and the, the gang on that Trimble side, regardless of the score, they, yeah, they have play. played their hearts out here tonight. And don't be surprised if you see Coach Ferris substitute as well. <laughs> I mean, it's about the experience. Uh, you know, of course, Marion Local is going to celebrate this win, and, and as they should. You know, you know, experiencing and putting together a three-peat, but uh, the Tomcats have got nothing to hang their heads about getting here, playing as many games as you can possibly play in the season. You should be very proud of that. And remember, you know, the positive. You know, all the games throughout the season, the guys, in the locker room and then uh, the playoff and getting here for the first time in school history. They quickly get to the line of scrimmage on a third down play. They hand it off. Take it down to the 25 yard line. Nate Moeller with the football. Hey, with regards to the substitutions, I mentioned before, you know, Marion local, they have what, 92 boys in the school, 63 are on the football team. I, I believe, if I have the numbers right, only 47 dress for Trimble. Now, the school size boys enrollment is the same, but they don't have quite as many numbers out for the football team. I have a sneaking suspicion that's going to start to change in Trimble in the next <laughs> few years right. because right. all those young kids that are in sixth grade, they all want to be part of this football team now. Going to have to buy a few more helmets next year. Yeah. Fourth down play, they'll turn it over on downs, and Trimble will take over with 2.13 left to go in the game. Nightly on Fox Sports Live, Jay Onright and Dan O'Toole bring you all the scores, news, and highlights you need. Don't miss Fox Sports Live. Nightly on Fox Sports 1. To find it, go to foxsports1.com right now. With 2.13 left to go in the game, Trimble comes out offensively. They still got their guys out there. Stanley hands it off. And he gave it to Bryce Smathers. And that's his first carry tonight. Goes forward for a couple of yards. And even though 
Marion Local has substituted all of their players on defense. Uh, the results remain the same. Uh, you know, Trimble on first down, and I just never really got anything going, making any hayway, getting into a rhythm offensively. Right. They, they, they never were able to Second land down. on first down and put themselves, in, you know, position to, to, to convert. I don't think they've, they've got a first down by Trimble here in the second half. Spathers is it inside, then cut it outside. Took it up out to the 35. It'll be a yard shy of a first down. And they were just minus the explosive plays. I mean, we saw that at halftime uh, that they they didn't they had one play of 10 plus yards, and you know that's just They're not going to put all, not going to equate to a lot of points on the board. You know, I asked you uh, earlier tonight during our pregame show about experience and, and would it play a factor here tonight. You mentioned how early in the game, it, you know, the tempo. I think the one thing that maybe we overlook the experience factor where it plays is all of the extra games in recent years that the Marion local football team has had. All those extra practices for those kids who were sophomores and juniors that are now seniors. That pays off that, somewhere. That, all that, that extra that football much, you play. That's right. You're exactly right. You're that much better for all that practice time, all the game time that you had. I mean, we're looking, what, uh, over the course of three years, an extra 15 games that they played on top of uh, you know, uh, the, the Tomcats. Well, I think there's a reason why they'll be the fifth defending state champion to win this weekend. I mean, uh, there's there's definitely an advantage if you're good enough to get there and win it. Yeah. Why the next year, if you especially if you have guys who are returning and young guys who got extra experience, it just makes you that much better. Under a minute to go, Connor Stanley pumps it. He's going to try to go deep one time. And it's knocked away from Jimmy Ward. Out of bounds. Nice defense made by. Let's see, that was number 22, Nathan St. New. Got back there defensively and able to knock it away. Now, Tim Goodwin was named one of the coaches of the year in Division 7. There were three coaches who shared the award. He was one of them. Well deserved. So he has 165th career win against 40 losses. As the Flyers close in on the title. Stanley under pressure, spins away. And the story remains the same, even with the Flyer reserve players in there now. Nowhere to run. They'll be sacked and it will be fourth down. They won't have to run another play if they don't want to. But Connor Stanley said, no, nope, I'm not going out. That's not going to be my last play. He wants one more shot at it. With 10 seconds left, he'll drop back. The pump. He's going to let it go. Deep downfield, he's going for. And it's knocked away. He was looking for his tight end, Wyatt Bragg, but it was defended and knocked to the turf. And now. How about that? That's that's just awesome. Connor Stanley gets his kids lined up and says, man, I'm taking one more shot at the end zone. Oh, that's terrific. Never give up the ship. Never give up. That way, baby. Take that lesson with you all the way through your life. So for the Flyers, one final snap, and this one will be in the history books. Be up to the freshman quarterback Dwayne Loigers. Take that snap. Go to a knee. And the Maria Stein Marion local Flyers are state champions for the seventh time in school history. They have won it for the third consecutive year. The first ever Division Seven state champion in Ohio. And I tell you what. They did it to me in, in very convincing fashion in the way they've done it all year. This is their fifth shutout of the season. They averaged uh, on the year giving up just eight points a game. You know, their defense was terrific here tonight. They were opportunistic when they got turnovers. They quickly converted them into points and put this baby on ice. Uh, yeah, how about the turnovers there? Well, well they, I count three interceptions. You know, one by Schwederman as uh, Trimble was going in in the, in the first half, and then the two defensive linemen that come up with the picks that set up the, the, you know, the points as well. And uh, 
They were outstanding on defense. Well, you know, they picked the shut out here. Tonight's discount drug mark. Player of the game, quarterback Adam Burke. I mean, there's probably a number of different ways you could have gone on Marion Local. It was truly a, a team effort tonight. But uh, the big guy did it, running the ball, and he threw it. He was very effective. Made a lot of good throws, a lot of pinpoint passes. When he ran it, he yeah. ran it downhill. He was tough, and he had to give a big pat on the back to all his offensive linemen. And for those holes they created, and especially mm -hmm. in the passing game, the amount of time you mentioned, the amount of time that he had to throw the football. They really kept him off. Well, the final game of our weekend coverage. Hope you enjoyed all seven state championship games. Let's go down to the field. Lindsay is with our Discount Drug Mart player of the game. Adam, headed to Pitt next year. How does it feel to end your career with a state championship? Uh, it, it feels great. Words can't describe it. You know, coming into the season, this was our ultimate goal. And, you know, we had we know we had the team back and stuff. And we had the right players to do it. And just leaving my senior year with uh, three state titles is something I dreamed about. So it's awesome. And you've played in some big games over your career. How does this one compare? Oh, uh, it, it's definitely up to the tip top. I mean, like I said, three state titles, three big games. And, and it's awesome to... Just get back here and uh, with the crowd and the community here. It's, it's a great atmosphere, and it was awesome. All right, thanks so much. Congratulations, Adam. Guys? All right, thanks, Lindsay, and congratulations to Adam Berkey. And we'll definitely be keeping an eye on his career as he progresses now on to the next level. And hey, to the Trimble Tomcats, uh, hats off to a tremendous season. 14-0 coming into tonight's game, first time ever advancing to the state championship game. They they were a game bunch. They, they gave it all they had, and they, they, they made it a game all the way up until the final minute of that first half. You had a feeling, though, when, when Marion scored right at the end of the first half that that might have been a decisive blow, and it really swung the momentum. The turnovers in the second half, just too much to overcome. But uh, they don't go home empty-handed. They'll take home their runner-up state championship trophy. And listen to the crowd that's uh, here still from Trimble. And hey, they deserve your applause. They deserve your adulation. Because as we said before, you, you can't let what happened tonight dampen what has been an outstanding season for everybody in Gloucester, Ohio, that has followed the Trimble Tomcats this year. They'll finish their season 14 and one state runner-ups. And we'll go down to the field for the trophy presentation now. To the Tomcats of Trimble High School. Coach Ferris, a magical season. How about your great fans? Fourteen wins this year, culminating in your first appearance in the state finals. I know you're very proud of your seniors, and we're very proud of your school. And it gives me great pleasure on behalf of our board of directors and all of our member schools to present you the runner-up trophy 2013 Division 7. Congratulations. Well, I know it's hard for you to, to relate to since you always won the championships yeah. and won the national championship, <laughs> state championship, national championship. Yeah. You were always a, no, no. you were always on the other side hey, of this. Hey, we were going for a three-peat and we lost in the playoffs, so I know what they're feeling, huh? You, you know, and, and it's, it's, I think at the moment, the, the gravity of the moment, there's no way that you can uh, take any satisfaction or, or think about the good times. Right now, all you're consumed with is you just spent all that time and, and all that energy and effort, and you've lost. And, and it's tough yeah. to overcome it's that sad. right now you're, in this moment. And you're sad. Yeah, you, you're feeling a lot of disappointment. Uh, there's a lot of emotions going through the Tomcats, but you know, again, you got to focus on the, you know, what got you there, yeah. the season that got you there, and that's what they're going to remember. And it's uh, certainly, uh, uh, hopefully, for the Trimble Tomcats, it's a, it's a, a launching point to take their program 
up to where this uh, Maria Stein Marion local program has gotten to their seventh state championship. What a program they have developed, a battle hardened by the competition in the Midwestern Athletic Conference. And now their third straight state title trophy about to be presented down on the field, the seventh in their school's history. Coach Goodwin, it seems like your fans are not getting tired of this. How about this? Seven state championships. Three state championships in a row. The best playoff winning percentage in OHSAA history. Clearly the premier football program in the state of Ohio. It gives me great pleasure on behalf of our board of directors and all of our member schools to award you the championship trophy for the first time in Division 7, 2013, Marion Local Flyers. The three-peat is complete. Well, the Maria Stein, Marion Local Flyers, 33 to nothing. The final score tonight here in the seven, in Division Seven, and this prank really puts uh, the Flyers in some elite company in the state of Ohio in the history of the playoffs. But as I mentioned before, you got Versailles, Delta St. John's. They're in the same conference uh, as. Mary, Mary Local, so three yeah, teams from the same that's conference right. How about are that? on this list. And we'll go downstairs one more time. Lindsay has the head coach, Tim Goodwin. Coach, three state championships in a row. What does this win in particular mean to your program and the tradition that you've tried to create here? Well, it, it's just fun. It's something special. You know, we've never, we, we've done a couple of back to backs, but we've never got three in a row. So it, it's just a great group of kids. Uh, these, these seniors, uh, I'm going to miss them dearly. A little better, three versus two in a row, huh? Yeah, that's that's, that's pretty fun. Uh, you know, hopefully we'll, we might be back sometime, but uh, we're just going to enjoy it tonight. All right, thanks so much, Coach. Congratulations, thanks. Matt. Thanks a lot, Lindsay, and thanks for your help all weekend long here in Maslin. Great job, and uh, thanks to everybody and folks. It takes an army of people to bring seven state championship games in the span of three days to you, and and the guys and gals they've <laughs> had to overcome the elements. About a foot of snow yesterday, but everybody involved just did a tremendous job. So thanks to everyone who participated. Frank, uh, always fun to work alongside you. Likewise, and look forward Matt. to yep. doing it again yep. next year. Absolutely. But this Absolutely. was a this was a fun uh, fun tournament. We saw uh, you know some great individual efforts. We saw some great uh, team performances. And to me, the, uh, what I always remember about this particular tournament in this state championship weekend, not so much. The great games, because there weren't a lot of necessarily nail biters, terrific games, but the programs and the, the just the dominance of the programs. And, you know, five right. of the seven yeah. winning consecutively in back-to-back -back years, and for the Flyers, three, right. three in a row. None, none more dominant than the, the Marion local yeah. Flyers here. So that's going to wrap up our coverage, and uh, obviously uh, uh, a bit of a sad farewell to Stark County. Next year, the state championships will come your way from Columbus will be at the Horseshoe. But for Frank, for Lindsay, for everybody here at Sports Time Ohio, I'm Matt Underwood. Thanks so much for watching. Enjoy our continuing coverage of high school sports. High school hoops will be coming up shortly here on Sports Time Ohio. Good night, everybody. Flyers are state champions for the seventh time in school history. They have won it for the third consecutive year, the first ever Division 7 state champion in Ohio.
Another state title for Marion Local. You can make it number seven now. And speaking of seven, it's the first ever in Division Seven as Marion Local gets the win 33-0 over Trimble. Congrats to Trimble for a great season, but Marion Local, the best in the business in Division 7. Dave Chodowski with you here on the post-game show. We are in the Hyundai Studios in downtown Cleveland, Ohio. The coach, Bill Powers, Ryan Cavanaugh, the final time we meet together, gentlemen, and it was a great three days. But, Coach, when you look at this game, it turns out it was just pure domination. Marion Local, the best for a reason. Yeah, the Marion Local team we expected to show up showed up in the second half, and they really just put it all together and clicked on all cylinders there. Yeah, I hate to steal a famous line, but they are who we thought yeah. they were. <laughs> and once you've got Birdkey and Gutta Miller going in the second half, and the defense stepped up. I mean, another their fifth shutout of the year against a very solid Trimble team. So hats off to Marion Local as they earn their seventh state championship. And for the 11th time in 13 years, a Mac school has won a state title, Coldwater earlier, and now Marion Local. We'll talk more about that in a moment, but let's get to the second half highlights as it was 13-0 at halftime. And guys, here comes Gutta Moeller again, 11-yard touchdown run. And at this point, we're thinking it could be over 19-0. Yeah, and that, you know what? That came off as on Coach Powers' point. Trimble had to do something coming out of the half when they received the ball. They threw an interception and then got a more to the rest. Yeah, and there was multiple interceptions for Trimble. Then here's Adam Berkey with his second touchdown. That made it 26-0. Berkey, the real deal, guys. Yeah, when you're six foot six, you're playing Division Seven. You're unstoppable. And here comes Gutta Moeller again, a one-yard touchdown late in the third quarter, and that made it 33-0. And that is our final. And there it is, the championship trophy. Heading back to Maria Stein, Marion Local. Let's take a look at the numbers now. Berkey, 17 of 28, 9, 216 yards in the touchdown. And then he also had the 12 carries for 47 yards and two touchdowns. And Guttemuller, nine carries, 44 yards and two touchdowns. Basically, if you go back to the pregame show, Ryan, the guys we told you about came through. Absolutely. And, you know, it's good for both those guys, Guttemuller and Berkey, especially considering the season they've had. They went through, each of them had injuries and missed several weeks. but. They, they came through and the lights shine the brightest. I'll never forget when I was introduced to the MAC years ago, and I'll tell you, they just keep winning state titles. And now, how about that? Delphi St. John, St. Henry, and Versailles has to look at Marion Local at the top coach because now Marion Local has seven. How about 30 state titles for this conference? Unbelievable, isn't it? I'll tell you, if you watch that Marion Local team tonight, you saw a lot of sophomores and juniors who contribute tonight, so I think that number could rise, raise pretty easily next year. And then you look at the defending of the titles. Ryan, I, I'm telling you, I mean, I played high school football in Ohio, covered it my whole career. I, I can't think of a year where you had five teams go back to back. And with Marion Local, it's back to back to back. Coldwater back to back. Clinton Massey back to back. SVSM back to back. And Moeller back to back. That's an unbelievable uh, stat or whatever accomplishment you, yeah. I don't think people realize how difficult it is to win a state championship have a bullseye on your back all year long expectations to get there and then go ahead and, and put all that to the side and accomplish it it's impressive wow so five of the six teams that came back Central Catholic couldn't they didn't they didn't make this point but the other five did now let's look at this state champions overall. St. Ignatius at the top at 11. Then you have Moeller jump to nine to break that tie. And then Marion Local at seven. So, I mean, that's the best of the best coach on that list. Tell you what, at this rate, Marion Local is going to move their way up to number two or one in the near future here, the way they're playing ball lately. <laughs> The, wow. well is, the well is certainly not dry no. for the Flyers. That's a solid program. What a great three days it was with the back-to-back -back champions, and it finishes off with Marion Local. But now, we have been talking about it for the last <laughs> three days. It's something that has become very powerful in the Sports <laughs> Time Ohio studios here in downtown Cleveland, Ohio, the Hyundai Studios. And it is time for the All Kavanaugh Team. <laughs> Roll it, boys. Start division one. Boom! Make the all Kavanaugh <laughs> team. Pony machine. Start in division one. Gus Raglan. You know there are 21 individual and team records set uh, in this game, and Gus Raglan was the star that shined the brightest. I'll tell you right now, there's a freshman here, Luke Waddell, who could be another guy in this team in the year to come. 
Only a freshman showing up on the Al Cavanaugh team. He really Impressive showed stuff. up. I mean, I wondered if he had Grunville Speed. He had more than Grunville <laughs> Speed. He sure did. This is your guy, Chad. Hello, Newman. Newman <laughs> Williams, two times. Forget about the back-to-back. -back. He's back-to-back -back Al Cavanaugh team. Shows up in the big games. He loves state titles, doesn't he? Speaking of state titles, Coach, Bailey Wolf. That's my boy, Bailey Wolf. Everybody said he's injured. He's not 100%. All he did was come out and score touchdowns in a championship game. Division 5, oh. my guy, Brody Hoying. You know, we don't put people, name people as captains, but you, I think everybody knows who my captain is. It's Brody Hoying. <laughs> Hoying, the captain of the all Kavanaugh team, huh? This guy well-deserving. There's Adam Hassan. I hope to gosh that his uh, stiff arm made the team, too, because that's the best stiff arm we saw all weekend. Adam Burkey, saving the best for last. What a quarterback. Did it both running and passing, leading Marion Local to that third consecutive state championship. And here's the rest of the guys. You look at the quarterback, Connor Krasancic, in a losing effort. He, he had a phenomenal day. He was what we thought he was. Isaiah Gentry there at the top, guys. How about that performance by him and just getting open and scoring touchdowns for Moeller today against Mentor? Yeah, and at the bottom, the entire Kirkland offensive line led by Ian Cosgrove, Mike Symbol, and Cannon Schroeder paving the way to 44 points for Kirtland. I'll tell you what, you see two guys there, Ryan Reese and Trotwood and Denver Martin from Cardinal Mooney. They came in second place in the tournament. Their consolation prize, though, is the all Kavanaugh team. <laughs> I got to be honest, I think Ed Doherty deserved to be in the video clip because that guy set a state record, right? And he put on an unbelievable performance. I know it was in a losing cause, but still, Doherty really showed up big time, didn't he? He was awfully impressive. And, and every time Mentor needed a big play, especially in their comeback, it was Ed Doherty they went to. And sometimes they gave it to him, and, and one time threw the touchdown pass, so I mean, all over the field. And you think about Bailey Wolf and Newman Williams doing it last year, and, and you love to have athletes that really shine in the big moment, and those guys did. So when we look at it, we just showed you the, all the state champions and the incredible numbers and the, and the feats and things that we saw. Coach, I start with you. As we look at the three days, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, what stands out the most to you with these seven state champions? I'll tell you, the thing that stood out most to me was I love physical football. I love teams that are physical offensively and defensively. And if you saw this weekend, the more physical team, the team that brought it every single play, won the game. And that reassures my heart that this isn't a video game offensive anymore. It's still back to basics. Coach, old school. Yeah. He, like, he likes the yeah, old baby. Too, Now, if we could just get some grass <laughs> yeah. to play on, he'd be happy. You know, for me, Chad, it was the, the programs. We've seen a lot of them in the establishment of programs. Teams like Kirtland, Marion Local, who have built it from the ground up and they're still doing it. The only thing I would suggest is maybe they could share some share the love a little bit. Let some other teams. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we got Loveland in there for the first time, but let, let's have some other teams get some And that goes into year. my final point, the back-to-backs, obviously number one. But I also want to say... Cincinnati beat Cleveland twice head-to-head, -head. Loveland over Glenville and Moeller over Mentor. So, you know, there's that bragging rights that go with those two cities. I know Columbus, big-time city as well, but we had two head-to-head -head there with Cincinnati and Cleveland. Cincinnati won both of them. So congrats to Southwest Ohio for those state titles. We have special thanks that we have to get out there right now. Of course, Francois McGillicuddy, Tom Farmer, Pat Kilkenny. We would like to thank all of the production teams in Canton and Maslin over the seven playoff games. Of course, the great announcers both up in the booth and the sideline reporters as well. And in our studio crews here in Cleveland, Kevin Berger, Derek Dadich, Joe Wozniak, Chris Moore, Don, Laura, Dana, masterful job in master control. And of course, Dan Larson. We couldn't do it without Super Dan Larson. <laughs> and then our crew, of course, Coach Ryan and the producer, Seth Steger and Gene Winters were fabulous. I'm Dave Chudowski. Thank you so much at home for watching. Without you, we would not be able to do it. We brought you seven state champions. Hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you next year, everybody. Have a great year.